Hello and welcome to This Week in Laker Football, your exclusive weekly look into the West Bloomfield Lakers varsity football team on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keefe alongside West Bloomfield head coach Zach Hilbers. The Lakers coming off a rousing victory on Friday against Southfield a and defeating an undefeated Warriors team 31-20 to at home. And it was a surprising victory in some ways because... Southfield A&T had been firing on every cylinder coming into this week. What was the difference maker for your team in terms of taking care of business on Friday night and getting out to a hot start in that first half? Well, it's everything we've kind of talked about all year. You know, it's, we knew we had the ability within us to, to go out there and play that complete of a game. But, you know, we had done it as an offense for some games. We had done it at a defense, as a defense for some games. And really for that first, I don't know, 30 minutes of the game, we kind of put it all together and put ourselves in a position where we could, you know, play safe and run the clock out, which we did a pretty good job of and kind of coasted uh, to victory. But it, it was really encouraging. It was a lot of fun. And it was good to see, like, the kids kind of realize that, you know, the potential that we can get to. Yeah, and playing against a team like that with the number of weapons they have, a yeah. blue-chip quarterback and Isaiah Marshall who's having a fantastic season, yeah. not only were you able to shut him down in, on, in, the, in the air, but for the most part, the run game also. What was the key to shutting down that offense that's been tearing really good teams apart all season long? Well, it was giving them different looks. Uh, we were talking about it, you know, just in our team meeting, walking down here, just mixing up what you do. You do the same thing every time. He's too good of a player, and, you know, it's the supporting cast are too good to uh, just kind of do the same thing the whole game. So we try to mix our looks up, mix our coverages up, mix our fronts up, and just kind of keep them off balance. That was our goal, and we think it worked in a lot of ways. Um, so, you know, hats off to the kids. They really, like, kind of embraced the challenge uh, of the week and got the job done. On the offensive side, putting up 31 points against this team, 28 in the first half. Southfield A&T was a team that previously this season had only given up 28 or more one time. Uh, what was the difference maker for you on the offensive side to be able to get really so far ahead of them, particularly in the run game? Well, we knew they had played some really good teams. And like I said, they're, they're a really good team too. But they hadn't played, we didn't think, anybody with our kind of team speed since week one when they played Cast Tech. And that was a pretty evenly matched game. And, you know, teams grow a lot throughout the year. So we knew that, you know, we at least had the ability to kind of exploit some things in their defense. And, you know, it worked. And we were lucky enough to, you know, I guess execute cleanly where we put ourselves in a really good position. That being said, in the second half, 14 points uh, to, your th to, your three, uh, to your three in the second half within a, a touchdown at the last second in that game, make it ultimately 31 to 20. What was the what was what was the change? What adjustment do you think that they made in that second half that helped them get kind of out ahead of your team on the offensive side, different to what they had in the first half? I mean, I don't really know. Uh, I guess what they did. I know what our goal was was that you know when you go into halftime, twenty-eight nothing. You know, the only way that they're going to get back in the game is if we make mistakes or if we give up big plays. So. We switched some things up uh, schematically on defense just to make sure they weren't going to get big plays. And for the next 14 minutes of game time, we had the ball for 11 minutes. So um, now we only got a field goal out of that. We had a, we drove the ball down the field. Had a, you know two kind of big holding penalties, which took some points off the board. But if you can eliminate 11 minutes, and you know they scored right out of half, but they didn't touch the ball again until it was the fourth quarter, right? And all of a sudden it's 31 to eight, and you know we felt pretty comfortable, I guess. West Bloomfield defeating Southfield A&T, giving them their first loss of the season last week at home. This week, they're taking on Oak Park. Uh, and, Coach, what were the lasting lessons that you, you were telling and your staff were telling the kids from that game, going up against an undefeated team in a rivalry game on senior night and yeah. coming out with a really big win? I guess, you know, just to kind of enjoy it while it happens, you know, the, the sport can be so volatile. Um, you know, there's ups and downs to the season. So it, it's important when you have an emotional game like that against a really good team and you play well to just, you know, enjoy it for what it is. At the end of the day, it's a game. And, you know, I know that we had a lot of fun last week, but at the same time, our message was, you know, like, we're not done yet. The season's not over. Uh, we show what we can do. It's on us now to, I guess, re repeat that and don't let it be a one-time thing. Yeah, Oak Park will be West Bloomfield's final matchup of the season on Friday. The Knights from the OAA White Division, West Bloomfield from the OAA Red, and then on to playoffs beginning this weekend when West Bloomfield learns where they will be in the 2023 MHSAA playoffs. We'll take a break on, on this week in Laker football. On the other side, we'll talk about the defense. A big part of that win on Friday was the secondary cornerback Bryce Will will join us next. Stay with us on this week in Laker football. Snap to Marshall. 
Pocket collapses. He goes forward and he goes down. Brandon Davis Swain on the sack. The Punisher gets involved early. Yeah, I mean, just a phenomenal play right there. He almost gets away. You see the pressure right up the middle immediately from Gabriel. He, he sidesteps it, thinks it's gone, but then Brandon Davis Swain and Gabriel right there to bring him down. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Looking for a score, a schedule, a story? MHSAA.com has you covered. Our newly redesigned website has everything you need to follow high school sports in Michigan. And it's optimized for mobile use. Fans can submit scores on a Friday night check playoff pairings and game times, or read about the student athletes from your community. Your first stop is MHSAA.com. Connect with us online and get everything you need all in one place. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to This Week in Laker Football, your weekly exclusive look into the West Bloomfield Lakers varsity football team on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keeft, and this is Bryce Rowe, cornerback for West Bloomfield, a senior in, uh, in his final year at West Bloomfield High School, heading to Central Michigan next fall. And, and it's been a great season for the secondary so far, you and Jameer leading that front, but the young guys have been stepping up too. How impressed have you been with some of these younger players in their first season and their first varsity reps? I've been very impressed, especially with Jonathan Edison, who I think was on here earlier in the season. But he's been, him and Will Johnson have been stepping up very, very, very impactfully for us. Yeah. Whips, my bad. Whips. Yeah. I mean, both, both of them, have, they're behaving like Will Johnson of the University of Michigan, shutting yeah. down uh, these def these offenses. And last week in particular, that Southfield a &T team you guys went up against, if, if any team in, in this schedule has had the number of weapons that you need to defeat a West Bloomfield defense, it was them, especially in that wide receiver core. What was the difference maker for you, for Jameer, for these young guys in shutting down those weapons and knocking out those connections with Isaiah Marshall? Uh, the different coverages we ran, we disguised a lot of coverages. We ran the different coverages. Uh, we did a lot of after work uh, practice, after work practice and practice to get ready for these guys. We had a lot of RY receivers like Marquise Morris, Nigel Dutton, Brandon Davis Swain. A lot of different our own wide receivers here at West Bloomfield got us prepared for this game. In what ways do you find that going up against that kind of competition week to week helps you prepare to play your best football on Fridays? It just gives you a better game look. It gives you a better game speed, a better rep in practice. So it just gets you ready overall. You're a D1 player going to Central Michigan next fall. And, and a lot of what goes into being a great player at this level is stuff that goes into being a great player at the next level. So as you've grown as a player at West Bloomfield High School, how has your approach to the game, to preparation, to game day on Friday or on, or on the weekends in, in the playoff time, how has that changed over the, these years? Just knowing that it can't change and knowing that adversity is always going to hit in the game, outside of the game, off the field, on the field. You just got to stay through the face and court, stay through the course and face it through every all the adversity. Bryce Rowe with us on This Week in Laker Football. West Bloomfield cornerback heading to Central Michigan next fall, but still got plenty of football left at West Bloomfield this season. And, and when we talk about those young guys coming up as we did, and, and talk about your storied career here at West Bloomfield High School, an interception last week that was key, and, and plenty of involvement on the defensive side, breaking up passes and shutting down opportunities. For these young guys coming up in this system, whether they're at the middle school level, the freshman JV level, what did they need to do to make the most out of their high school career? Just work outside of high school and on the field. When you come here, don't waste your time. Don't be in the school and not get in your books. All the simple things that people tell you you need to do, those are the things that must be done. Being a balanced person helps you, I would imagine, on the football field as, as it does uh, all, overall in life. So, Bryce, outside of the game of football, what are some of your common interests? 
I'm just hanging out, playing football, watching football, fantasy football. <laughs> it's a lot of just football, to be honest with you. You're talking about the Lions schedule and, you know, who you're kind of worried about going forward with this Lions team that's been playing great football in their own right. So when you look at those next levels, those cornerbacks at the college and, and at the professional level, who are some of those guys that you look up to and maybe model your approach or your style of play? Uh, Sauce Garner from Michigan, of course. A lot of Michigan DBs just because we have a lot of products coming out of here. Max, Max, Maxwell Harrison, I look at. Will Johnson, a lot of Coach Kaysan's own products. So it's just a lot of Michigan in-state DBs. Yeah, and a lot of really great DBs have come out of this state in past years of playing at the next level. Maxwell Hairston's been fantastic this season at Kentucky. He watched the game a few weeks ago. I tuned in to Kentucky's game, and as I tuned in, right that second, he's, get, he's pulling in an interception. So these Lakers going out of the next level and having a stellar career for you. What are you looking forward to the rest of this season and as you approach your football future at Central Michigan? I'm looking forward to finishing the season with all my other seniors with me and just making sure we can come, up, come away with this season with some more than just a first round loss or a disappointing ending and fighting our way all the way through. If, if you can get past this Lakers defensive front, your next challenge is guys like Bryce Rowe, Jameer Benjamin, that young Lakers secondary and those safeties. And a big challenge coming up this week, Pro Park. Bryce, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll take a break on this week in Laker football. On the other side, Coach Hilbers will rejoin me. We'll preview Oak Park and tell you more about how you can follow along with the Lakers all season. This is This Week in Laker football. We'll be back next on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FF. Sam Marshall talking it over. With his offensive coordinator, Richard Pop, the former offensive coordinator at Brother Rice. Snap, looking to the sideline. Marshall got a roll out, passes up the field, and it is deflected and is picked off again. In favor of West Bloomfield, another turnover. Bryce Rowe finally gets the football. I mean, really just, he's already, he may have already established himself as the star of tonight's game. Four passes defended now and an interception on the fourth one, just undercutting that pass, just a beautiful play. And really, the Lakers so far seem in very good position to pull off the upset. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chavon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Welcome back to This Week in Laker Football, your weekly look into everything about the West Bloomfield Lakers varsity football team exclusively on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keith, alongside West Bloomfield head coach Zach Hilbers. Coming off a big game against a team like Southfield A&T, it's easy for especially young guys to get really high on that sort of a win. Going up yeah. against an undefeated team, we talked about it last week. It's a rivalry game. They got history with these guys. So yeah. starting off coming into this week, going up against Oak Park, how do you refocus your team after a big win, especially with the distance between those two teams on Friday night? Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. You know, it's almost like if you could make the schedule, which obviously you can't, we would have made that Southfield game week nine. So it's just that we carry that momentum right into the playoffs. But, you know, it doesn't work that way. Uh, so we just talked to the team about how, uh, you know, Oak Park's a team that's fighting for their, their season right now. They're right on the brink of the playoffs of Division II. Uh, coach Carter is a tremendous coach. He's been doing it really for a really long time. And, you know, really high character guys, teams play with a ton of effort. They're not going to, they're backed into a corner. They're not going to back down. And like I said, they're fighting for their season. Yeah, and, and this is a, a program that had been to the playoffs nine consecutive times yeah. before this two-year drought, and this is a chance for them to get a big win, much like you guys last week, yeah. collect a lot of playoff points in the process. So how important is this game, and how important are you preaching to your team that this week is? You guys are in the playoffs. You're going to have a good position, but this can only help. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they definitely have different motivating factors than us. You know, for us, now that we've kind of solidified our spot, it's about improving – 
on us as a team, making sure that we're ready to play in week 10, 11, 12, and hopefully further on than that. Um, but, you know, that what that comes down to is, is really analyzing ourselves, analyze, analyzing our weaknesses and what we need to get better at. And if we can do that this week, we'll be in a good spot to, you know, to go out and compete on Friday and hopefully win. But, you know, you get in that business of thinking that, you know, just because you beat Southfield that you're going to show up and beat somebody else, it doesn't work that way. Lakers taking on Oak Park this week at 6 o'clock. Uh, you know, we, we filmed this show on Monday, a little inside football for you. And some, some news that came in today is the, a change of location, Coach. You're going to have the game be at home at West Bloomfield High School rather than on the road. But at the same time, 6 o'clock, how does that change the dynamic of game day? Being A, that it, uh, the location is in a different spot than it was originally intended to be, and B, that that game's going to happen an hour earlier. Well, I, I, it's always nice to play at home, and it's not for the same reasons you would see in, like, college football or professional football with, with the crowds. I mean, we do get a better turnout at home, but uh, it's really about your routine. You know what I mean? You don't have to ride the bus for 30 minutes or 40 minutes. It might not seem like much, but when you got that many you know, young kids sitting on a bus, it, it's just a lot easier to keep them here, keep them together, keep them focused on the task at hand when you don't have to travel. All right. Um, but, you know, outside of that, like, it doesn't change – too much for us like we we still have a job to do and whether it's here there neutral like it's our job to show up and be ready to go so look it got moved here and um, we'll be ready for it a lot of teams at the end of a regular season especially when they know they're going to be playing extra football in uh, in the in the postseason they use that final week a as as one more chance to get themselves some playoff points have a strong performance and perfect their game plan mm -hmm. but also sort of as a dress rehearsal for the intensity of playoff football. How do you balance that as you're preparing for a game against Oak Park, but knowing you got a lot of football hopefully left to play this fall? Yeah, it's definitely, like you said, it's definitely a balance where you can kind of script practice differently knowing that you have like a almost a two-week goal. So obviously we're playing on Friday and we have to be ready to go and, and compete and hopefully at our, at our best and carry over our success from the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, but at the same time is our goal is to do everything we can to make sure that a week from now we're also at our best, you know, whether that's keeping guys healthy that might have been dinged up Friday night or previous weeks uh, and holding them out or really just getting other guys looks, seeing like where guys can contribute on the field, you know, if we make a playoff run, you know, building some depth on your special teams and on your roster. So, Coach, earlier on, we didn't talk about this because I, I felt like this would be a better conversation to have about preparing for this final week and looking forward. At, near the end of that game, we know it's a rivalry game. A lot of these guys have prior relationships. There's a lot of back-and-forth conversation. And at times, things got a little bit chippy yeah. after plays. You had uh, an ejection late in the game also as a result of some unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. At this time of the year, how much more important does it does it become for your team to maintain their composure and discipline play after play game after game knowing that every little bit of impact you have on the field spreads throughout the rest of the season and could impact whether you go home on a Friday night well you're absolutely right uh, I mean for, I guess first of all it wasn't an ejection the referees sent him off the play uh, the field for a play okay. which they're allowed to do to de-escalate a situation so I mean, we, we double check with that and that, that's all that was which is better I yes. guess but it's still not ideal because you know if you're in a like you said you know maybe you're in a closer game or you're in a playoff game one play can make a difference right and you know it was a really emotional game and I thought for the most part we really held our composure really well until the end when I think the kids started to realize that like hey we did it you know and we, we got the job done they kind of lost their minds a little bit so yeah that de definitely there's a message about I guess finishing the job right we were great all week about it we were great all game about it it was really you know whatever the last five minutes of game time 15 minutes of real time we just got to finish the job and, and do that because you're right you know you get down to the playoffs like it, sometimes it's one play sometimes it's seconds within a play they can really make a difference in terms of oak park you mentioned their their team it's been vastly improving over the course of this season coming into this week three and five that's a big improvement over a season ago when, when they hadn't won a game and so when you're looking at this oak park team what are some of the key points you think of from offensively and defensively of this year's nights well they definitely they got some tough strong kids it looks like so their linebacking core looks really good they tackle well they got some guys that they both those kids play running back too and they run really hard um you know just from talking with coach carter he says it's one of the, the best all-around group of kids he's had in a while so i know they're just going to come and give everything they have
Oak Park coming into West Bloomfield on Friday night. Six o'clock game, a little bit earlier as the game's been moved to West Bloomfield. We'll have live coverage of it beginning right around five o'clock with our program here. And all that can be found on civiccentertv.com slash Lakers Sports Coach. Your final thoughts going into this last week of the regular season as you look forward to hopefully a very long playoff season also. Well, like I said earlier, it's really about making sure that we're achieving at our best. You know, we played Southfield, a team that likes to balance run and pass last week. Oak Park's traditionally a little bit more run heavy. So it'll be similar game plan to like Oxford. And you have to be able to win football games different ways, right? So uh, we'll have to focus on these guys, try to take away their strengths, and again, amplify our game to get where it needs to be. Last few weeks, Lakers have been able to really show very well how they can adjust and change their game plans and play a variety of different styles of football that could play a factor on Friday. But as the Coach just said, a very run-heavy team in Oak Park. Coach, appreciate you joining us and appreciate you for being with us as well on This Week in Laker Football. Come back early on every single week for your latest updates on the West Bloomfield High School varsity football team. And as always, you can follow along with us on civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports. For the entire West Bloomfield High School athletic Department and our team at Civic Center TV. I'm Tyler Keith. Thanking you for joining us on this week in Laker football. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Follow us on Twitter at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chavon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Looking for a score, a schedule, a story? MHSAA.com has you covered. Our newly redesigned website has everything you need to follow high school sports in Michigan. And it's optimized for mobile use. Fans can submit scores on a Friday night, check playoff pairings and game times, or read about the student athletes from your community. Your first stop is MHSAA.com. Connect with us online and get everything you need all in one place. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The final stretch to playoff time, one team on the rise and the other on the chase for their last chance at postseason football. Good evening and welcome to another stupendous night of West Bloomfield Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keeft alongside the Michigan man, Matt Catoni. West Bloomfield comes into tonight's game on a three game winning streak resurgent after taking down one of the MHSAA's top Division I squads in Southfield a and a week ago, handing them their, <clears throat> their first loss of the, the season, 31 to 20 here at the Swamp. Let's take a look back at week number eight. A 
of our recap of week number eight in just a moment. Take a look back at Southfield a and that matchup last week with the Warriors, 31 to 20 victory. We do have a recap video of that. We'll get to you in just a few minutes. But Matt, that was an exciting game a week ago. The Lakers off to a hot start against Southfield a and 28 consecutive points to start the spot them through the first half and first couple minutes of the second half before Southfield a and A little bit of a resurgent second half, but not enough to get by the L boys. Yeah, really, that game started off, it was really looking like it was going to be a dogfight. You know, Southfield A&T's defense really getting a lot of pressure and just intensity off the front. It was really, it was really just incredible to see how West Bloomfield pivoted and adjusted. And it really, a lot of credit to Cam Flowers for how he was able to run the ball and get that offense going. We'll take a look now at that recap from a week ago, West Bloomfield 31, Southfield a and 20. Take a look back at that big victory. The Lakers finish off their regular season home schedule with a senior night rivalry game against the undefeated OAA White Division champion Southfield a and Warriors. After a first drive, three and out, West Bloomfield gets an early scare on the Warriors' punt return, but the Grim Reaper comes calling on the returning team. Lakers come away with a fumble and get a second chance inside their five. Shortly after, nothing doing for the Lakers or the Warriors on their next two drives, but just over halfway through the first quarter, Marquise Morris gets the football and takes it in for six. Lakers strike first for an early 7-0 lead. On the next drive, here comes the blue chip quarterback, Isaiah Marshall, and here come the edge rushers, Brandon Davis Swain and Jonathan Gabriel taking care of business on third down. That brings possession back to the home team and they get back at it in the air. Rick Nance finds the flash. Marquise Morris with a lightning bolt just threads the needle between the numbers. That sets up a Joshua Tate touchdown, number two on the season for 13, hitting pay dirt for the first time since week number two. Lakers 14, Southfield A&T zip. Now it's up to the Warriors offense. Can they answer and get on the board? With time ticking in the first, a Davier Burt run pushes Southfield near plus territory. Then spooky season strikes again. A bad snap over Zeke Marshall's head. Sets the Warriors way back inside their 15 yard line to end the first. And before the rain, lightning strikes twice. Another bad snap to start the second quarter, but a tremendous save by the quarterback as Zeke Marshall slips the ball out just in time to Zavi Bowman. Nothing doing for Southfield a and and they yet again have to give the ball up to the Lakers. And it wouldn't take long for them to get back on the ground and take it home. This time it's a familiar face. Former Warrior Nigel Dunton crosses the goal line to turn this into a three-score lead. Lakers 21, Southfield a and 0. Southfield at that point yet to be shut out since 2018 and had only given up 28 or more once on the season. But then Marquise Morris makes that twice. He gets his second rushing touchdown of the game and his third of the season. Lakers take a 28 to nothing lead into the half. On to half number two, the ball goes back to Southfield and they finally get things going, hitting the turf in the now rainy conditions to march up the field. But then it's the dynamic duo of Marshall and Tashi Braceful in the air. A beautiful grab puts the Warriors on the board. And with a two point conversion, it's now 28 to eight. Meanwhile, the Lakers move up the field but struggle to make headway in plus territory, setting up a Justin Ward 34-yard field goal. That would be the last time West Bloomfield got on the scoreboard that night, 31-8, late in the third. On to the final 12 minutes of football, and the Warriors aren't done fighting just yet. Isaiah Marshall finds Demario Quarles for the tutty to knock the lead down to 17. No good on this two-pointer, so it remains 31-14. And that, folks, is where it would stand the rest of the way. Save for a buzzer beater in garbage time to perhaps help out in the playoff points area. West Bloomfield takes care of business. Final score 31 to 20 as Southfield A&T finally meets its match in 2023. The Lakers giving their first loss to Southfield a and on the season. Southfield a and now ranked number 11 in the Division I playoff points picture. West Bloomfield after the victory last week 
jumps up to number seven, six and two overall in the season with 73.625 playoff points and a chance to make up a little bit more of that tonight at home for their final regular season game against the Oak Park Knights out of the OAA Blue Division. Plenty of football ahead for you on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Tonight, the regular season finale. And then all throughout playoff time, we'll have West Bloomfield Laker football, whether they're home, whether they're on the road, all throughout what's hopefully a bright future ahead, a championship run for the Lakers potentially in 2023. More of your Laker pregame show coming up after this break on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Find local municipal meetings at our program schedule on civiccentertv.com. Find when your meetings air live or when they're replaying on our Civic Center TV live stream. Find it all at civiccentertv.com and click schedule at the top of the screen. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Tyler Keith, Matt Catoni on the broadcast and the captains at center field for the Lakers and the Knights for the coin toss. It would appear that Oak Park has won the coin toss and they're gonna ask West Bloomfield to determine which side of the field they want to begin on. Now we'll get that final decision. West Bloomfield will begin defending the left side. Oak Park going to receive the kick to begin the game. So West Bloomfield will kick the ball off to receive the to begin the game. Oak Park will receive it, which means the Lakers will get the ball in the second half. And Matt, that sets the Lakers up very well because this defense has been potent all season long. And look, you go up against a what was a top 10 playoff point team a week ago in Southfield a and and shut them out through the first 27, almost 30 minutes of the game. You're going to be a tough team to beat week in and week out. Yeah, really, I expect the defense to shine through again tonight. Last week, shutting down really the, probably the best quarterback they're going to see all year unless they run into Bryce Underwood in the playoffs. So going up against an offense tonight that really has been struggling for most of the season, not scoring 20 points per game on average, I expect the defense to really have a good performance tonight. And yeah, Lakers, one of the toughest regular season schedules in the entire state of Michigan. The top 32 teams in each division get into the playoffs, at least in Division One. the top 32 teams get in. West Bloomfield currently sitting at number seven, but this season they've seen Lake Orion, number four overall. They've seen Southfield a &T, number 11. They started off the season against Clinton Township, Chippewa Valley at number 12, played Clarkston, number 16, and won against Rochester Adams a few weeks ago on this very field, the number 26 team in the state as we head into the final week of the season. So strength of schedule definitely been benefiting the Lakers. Those three wins making a big impact and those two losses along the way to Clarkston and to Lake Orion not having as major of an impact as they could maybe in another case as they get ready for Oak Park tonight looking to, to gain a lot of playoff points. Maybe make a little bit of headway and jump into that final 32 in their own respective division as they head toward the end of a what's currently three and five season. Key players all across the field for both both of these teams tonight for West Bloomfield on the offensive side. They've got quite the, the dynamo at wide receiver. He can catch the ball, he can make plays in the air, but making a lot of plays on the ground over the last couple weeks has been Marquise Morris, nicknamed The Flash, and boy, did he make a big flash last week. 11 carries for 134 yards and two touchdowns as long as the night. 48 yards on an incredible play and this is a guy that all season long has been averaging over 10 yards a carry nearly 11 on the season yeah really and the thing that stood out for most of the season is he refuses to go down with that first tackle he's almost shutting off that first defender almost 
pretty much every single time he gets out of the backfield, and it's just been phenomenal to watch the physicality that he runs with. Much like a guy we're seeing on Saturdays in Samaj Morgan, a little bit smaller of a wide receiver, just five foot nine, 160 pounds, but uses that speed and that athleticism to get out in the open space. Another guy that uses his speed to his advantage on the defensive side of the ball had a big impact last week. That would be Bryce Rowe, a.k.a. Blaze, the Central Michigan commit. Multiple pass breakups, including a key interception early against Isaiah Marshall a week ago and really proven why he's got got D1 talent and why Central Michigan's getting one of the best in the state next fall. Yeah, he was really my player of the game last week because he kind of set the tone for that defense. They sat back in coverage. They only rushed three pass rushers for the most part. So they were really leaning on a good performance from the secondary and Bryce Rose stepped up and delivered. A leader on that defensive side of the football and having a major impact on the Lakers defense all season long, especially a team that's kind of got that mixture of a ton of veteran talent, but a lot of young guys that they're depending on. And look, we got Bryce Rowe, we got Jameer Benjamin going to Central Michigan and UCLA respectively next fall to play at the collegiate level. But these guys coming up, Jonathan Edison comes to mind, Will Espy's had a great season too. They got some great mentors here in Benjamin and in uh, Bryce Rowe. Yeah, really, and that is the key, and that's really been a huge part of this West Bloomfield team going back years is kind of how this the legacy of this program has been passed down, passed down and passed down from generation of players to generation of players. Plenty of other people making news across our community. You can learn about all the rising and continuing stars in the greater West Bloomfield area each and every week on the Splash Live Monday through Friday beginning at 8.30 a.m. running until 12.30 every single morning. You can also see it all throughout the afternoons and the evenings and find us on demand on civiccentertv.com. We'll take a break. More of the Lake of Pregame Show coming up next on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. You're watching and listening to your home for Greater West Bloomfield News. Civic Center TV and 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake. West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake. 89.3 Lakes FM. Take a break and tune in to the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Siobhan as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com. Or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. I'm an ex-drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Two milligrams of fentanyl can be lethal. A lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. The sad reality is fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. More kitchen now. Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. West Bloomfield Laker football been making headlines all throughout the fall season and plenty more headlines and newsmakers across the town on your television screens and across the radio in the greater West Bloomfield area. Monday through Friday on the Splash Live. Join us beginning at 8.30 a.m. all throughout your morning on your way into work and as you're beginning your day Monday through Friday, the latest news and information from your community, communi communications with people from in the know in our local area on projects, on events, on special things happening in the four communities every single day. The Splash Live, your stories from your hometown on your community media, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The big news tonight is this Lakers final regular season game, Oak Park coming into town. And look, they've had a struggle these last couple of years, 0-9 a, a season ago. But this is a team that starts from the top. That leadership is excellent in Oak Park.
Park, and it all begins with the head football coach, Greg Carter, a legend in southeastern Michigan in the coaching ranks, a guy that's coached previous championship teams in Division 8 and Division 7 while it's uh, Detroit St. Martin de Poors in 2001 and 2002 and has 75 wins under his belt at Oak Park, three of those this season. If he's able to come away, away with a win tonight, that could potentially catapult Oak Park into the playoffs if they're able to take out a team that's top 10 in Division 1's playoff rankings tonight. But that's all going to come down to quarterback play and Oak Park a little banged up in that position, but they've had a great a situation of next man up this season with Artrell Guyton, the senior wide receiver, converted over to quarterback in 2023. And this is a guy that's a dual threat, much like Rick Nance. A lot of similar skill sets to our quarterback. Artrell Guyton is a weapon for Oak Park. 11 touchdowns and nearly 1,000 rushing yards on the ground this season. A couple of touchdown passes over the last few weeks and a track start in his own right, a 4-5, 40-yard dash. This is a guy that all Lakers defense, defensive players are going to have their eyes on tonight. Yeah, really, and it's going to come down to the defensive front really holding their water. Gabriel has been phenomenal at getting into the backfield throughout the season, but tonight it's going to be about really maintaining that contain and making sure that he doesn't allow him to scramble and really pick up those extra yards. We'll take one more break here on the Laker pregame show, and then it'll be time for kickoff on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Game. This originally an away game, but tonight it's a home game, and here come the L boys, the Lakers, in their black uniforms with white numbers, an alternate uniform for an alternate location tonight. It's a away game now at the Swamp as the Lakers get ready to finish their season against the visiting Oak Park Knights. Would have been their senior night at home, and so some extra festivities tonight, inviting in the community in Oak Park for their regular season finale as well. Just a few minutes away from kickoff, we'll get to the national anthem in just a moment, and this is gonna be an exciting night here in West Bloomfield as West Bloomfield tries to secure the best possible playoff spot, and Oak Park looking to get into the playoffs themselves with a big potential win to finish off their season. We'll now recognize those that have served our country and celebrate the colors with the Sink and the Star Spangled Banner from Laker Express. Star Spangled Banner as they do each and every week 
on the 40-yard line at West Bloomfield High School. One more time than they expected in 2023, but the good news is we got 24 minutes of football in this first half, 24 in the second half, and we've got 12 on the clock getting ready to begin tonight. And look, Matt, a lot of good last week against Southfield a and but that second half showed a little bit of holes for the Lakers when they get out to a big lead and when they got that confidence behind them. What do you want to see from the L boys tonight in their final regular season game? Really, I just want to see them parlay that confidence and discipline that they had last week and bring that into this week because you know not you're not necessarily playing the same level of competition this week but you're still going to have to play a disciplined game of tonight if you want to secure a home playoff win because royal oak is really going to want to get this win and possibly get themselves into the playoffs yeah, this is a big game for both of these teams. Don't let the three and five record across the field with the with the young men in white and the red numbers confuse you. This is going to be a big night for West Bloomfield and for Oak Park. Both teams needing to pick up a win to secure their best possible postseason potential. For West Bloomfield, a win tonight could possibly put them into the top five in the playoff rankings in Division One and set them up for a really, really important first round matchup and Matt that's more, no more evident than where we were a year ago that first round matchup with Cast Tech look some question whether or not that was the right decision Will but, it, it, but you know, having Please a guy like Rick Nance back in that field. game his first time back on the field and against a team like Cast Tech changing. had a big impact on the Lakers yeah, finish to last season that's what make games like this important yeah and that's something I expect is going to really be on Rick Nance's mind tonight and going forward it's really that playoff performance last year where he wasn't 100%. I really expect him to shine through tonight, have a good game, and really want to come through in the playoffs and dominate. Lakers tonight coming in six and two overall. Big win last week against Southfield A&T. But now you got the question, how do you answer that big win? Do you come back with confidence or do you come back a little overconfident and maybe take your foot off the gas? The Lakers got to be ready to play a full 48 minutes of football tonight. Regardless, we'll have the Lakers all throughout their playoff run coming up on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Head coach Zach Hilbers, Ken Rise, the offensive coordinator, as you're seeing on your screen, both been doing a great job coaching this team all throughout the 2023 season. And they're going to have their work cut out for them in the offseason as well. We'll have Laker football for you all throughout the offseason. The Lakers are going to see where they'll be in the playoffs in 2023 on Sunday evening. Valley Sports will host their annual selection show at 6 o'clock. And then the Lakers will know where they'll be presumably next week, Friday, possibly on Saturday as they begin the MHSAA playoffs. Again, the Lakers had, had lost the coin toss to Oak Park. Oak Park elected to receive the football tonight. As you see, the chain game and both these teams, the officiating crews also getting ready. And yeah, uh, Dave, you know, Dave Scott, our director in my ear, saying, yeah, a little bit tangled up there. Got to get things ready for, maybe that's part of the delay in this kickoff is getting the chain gang ready and doing great work all season long to help the officiating crew out. And look, these officiating crews, they don't get enough credit here in the MHSAA. And you know, they do hard work each and every week to keep West these games neat the and tidy and here in West Bloomfield. And, Look, I, all the staff getting involved. This, Matt, it's not just a team effort on the field. It's a team effort on the sidelines, too. Yeah, really, it takes more than just the players and coaching and staff to make a football game happen. All right, the chain gang is ready. Justin Ward, the Lakers kicker, is ready. And so are the men back for Southfield a and Rondre Austin and Quinton Blakely back to receive the kick for the Knights. 48 minutes of football ahead, 12 minutes on the clock. And we got a whistle, which means we got a football game at the Swamp. The Ward kickoff from the 40-yard line. It's a squib up into the seam. Recovered at the 32-yard line. Running back at the 35, still on his feet. Getting to the 40-yard line, getting to the sideline. Pushes up to the 45. And a big return for, for Oak Park. Is they're able to take that football from a relatively good territory at the 32-yard line. Take a look at this replay. Make use of great space and march right up the field. Alex Patterson, the freshman, with a great return, sets up the senior quarterback, Artrell Guyton and company, in great field position to begin this game. Yeah, really an impressive return right there. Looked like he kind of bobbled it initially on the recovery, but really finding that seam in the return right there and ripping off a good run. All the more reason, as we said, this Lakers defensive front, that front seven, has been a terror all season long. Gonna have to do the same tonight against a mobile quarterback, a dual threat quarterback, 
and some up and coming weapons in Oak Park. First down for the Knights with 11.52 to go in the first at the 44 yard line. Snap and a handoff and he's met immediately in the backfield and Xavier Davis scoops him up and brings him down for a loss. I mean, he was just back there immediately. Just looking on this replay, just standing no chance. He comes in unblocked and the running back didn't even have an opportunity to make a miss. Yeah, Quinton Blakely, a speedy back for Oak Park, immediately met by Xavier Davis. And, and that's just the strength of Davis versus the speed of the running back. He gets through the offensive line, wide open hole for the defensive lineman, not for the running back. Advantage Lakers. There'll be a loss of just two on first down. Sets up second and 12 at the Oak Park 43. Two men in the backfield alongside the quarterback, Artrell Guyton. Taking his time, setting up the play. Too wide for Oak Park. And a tight end on the end of their offensive line. Snap and a handoff up to the right side. Gets to about the 45 yard line. Jonathan Gabriel takes the rusher down as Blakely gets just a little bit past the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, the Royal Oak offensive line gets a good push initially right here. Then you see him just kind of sort of pinball around right there and Gabriel's able to get a hold of him and bring him down before he can gain much more than just, you know, the initial yardage lost. we will call that a gain of about four on second down, brings up third and eight with 10 and a half left in the first half and uh, in the first quarter. A great takedown by Jonathan Gabriel, assisted by those young linebackers and safeties for West Bloomfield who have been stepping up all season long. Take a look at the Oak Park sideline. They've been doing a great job coaching this team, rebuilding this program, and evident in those three wins this season. On third and eight, two men in the backfield again for Oak Park with two split out to the right. Snap. And the quarterback will keep it himself. Get up to the 50-yard line, pushing forward, and gets past the line to gain. First down, what an effort by Artrell Guyton. Guyton yeah, really county. just an impressive run right there. Looks down. like it was a designed run as well. Just, I mean, Lakers back there immediately. He's able to make a few guys miss and keep the legs moving and pick up the necessary yardage. Five foot 10, 165 pounds and willing to take a hit. Puts his shoulder down. You see him limping around a little bit. He had to really fight for that first down. A ton of contact. That's a tough senior quarterback. First and 10 for Oak Park in plus territory at the Laker 44. Snap, hand off to Blakely up the gut and stopped after a gain of about one yard, maybe half a yard really on first down, set up second and long. Yeah, these defensive linemen so far for the Lakers are performing tremendously. They're not really allowing much room at the line of scrimmage, not really giving up any gaps for the running backs to rip anything off. And so far, they're playing a very good game. They'll give Quentin Blakely, a all-state track athlete himself, one yard on first down with just under nine minutes left in the first, all tied up at zero. Second down and nine for Oak Park. Two men in the backfield again alongside the quarterback, Guyton. It's Quentin Blakely and Michael Reed, the sophomore, in the Oak Park 34. Reed now splits out to the right alongside another receiver, single man out to the strong side. Snap and hand off to Blakely. Gets past the line to gain. Still on his feet at the 20, at 30. Down to the 25. Oak Park breaks one free on second down. Yeah, really showing off that track speed right there. I mean, look at this. Just how fast he's able to accelerate through that hole. Next thing you know, he's 20 yards upfield. Just an a incredible run right there. But a very nice tackle right there to make sure that he does not get in the end zone. That speed becoming a factor for Oak Park in that rushing game to get outside the tackles. They shift around one of those blocks that their O-line opens up, and they got some space ahead of them. First down and 10 at the Laker 25-yard line. Oak Park gets into the red zone. Snap, hand off to Blakely, he drops it, gets on the ground. Looked like Thank West you, Bloomfield Jared. may have gotten one on top of that one. By the Lakers. And they do. Jonathan Gabriel comes up with it. The Lakers force a mistake for the Lakers. and capitalize on it. Yeah, you know, new quarterback in, young running back. You know, some of that youth at the position is really starting to show right there. An unfortunate fumble for Royal Oak, but now a key possession for the Lakers so they can keep things rolling. Now we'll take a look at that again here as the Lakers get set up offensively because it looks a little bit like Guyton and Blakely. Yeah, it was just a miscommunication. It wasn't like it was a read option and the quarterback took his time pulling or handing off that ball. That's just a little bit 
too antsy from the running back on second down. So now Lakers will start off at their 26-yard line. Snap to Nance. He'll take it himself up the middle, the 30-yard line. It gets to 35, pushing forward, and nearly a first down for the Lakers. That's really close. They may move the chains. Yeah, Guyton showing off his running ability. Royal Oaks initial drive. Now we're seeing some of Rick Nance's ability right here. Let's take a look at this. Puts his shoulder down at the end of that. One last little hit. Lays one down on Dion Cleary. Sets Lake up, Lakers up really well. Six and a half to go in the first half. First quarter, snap to Nance. Hand off to Marquise Morris. To the right side, at a 40-yard line, up near the 45. That will bring the Lakers past the line Marquise again. Morris, the ball and moving on forward. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Going Burrow. back to Morris after his big game last week. And once again, showing why they should keep on giving him the ball, just running tremendously these past few weeks. 6.15 to go in the first quarter, all tied up 0-0 at West Bloomfield in this season finale. They did give him the first down on that previous place, and now second and one for West Bloomfield. Nance with Morris in motion, snap, quarterback draw, Nance to the 45, and just past the line in the game. That's enough for first down, that's all you need if you're Rick Nance. Yeah, really just a something the Lakers have been doing all year in these like short yardage situations letting Nance do what he needs to do to pick up the those crucial yards because he's been very smart in these stick situations the yeah, great block by Josh Tate the running back making those key blocks in the backfield not getting as many touches as you would expect from the running back this season but making a big impact first down and 10 shotgun snap to Nance hands it off to Dunton gets past the 50 yard line into plus territory laundry on the field as he gets to the 48. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see carry. what the flag is right here Long likely going to be play. a hold of some sort or maybe possibly a block in the back so unlikely the the nice run right there is going to count for anything yeah that flag on the field at the termination of that play Nance nice handoff will shift around maybe a hold right there on the Laker offensive line, did look like Travis Robertson Walk had a little bit of a grab on, on Malik Brown. Take the penalty, first down. You heard it from the officiating crew. It's actually a block in the back as Dunton made his way out into the boundary. I'll set the Lakers back a few yards. And it'll be a second down. Snap and a handoff again. Nope, Nance takes it himself. Past the 50 to the 45. Hands on the carry. And he races that pass. As he gets down to the 42 yard line for first. Yep, we talked about Nance's running ability all season, and already ripping off two first down runs on this initial drive. And really just coming out and showing that they're going to maintain that same level of detail and intensity that they had last week. And yeah, Nance did not get on the ground last week, but on the season, the second leading rusher for the Lakers, 224 yards on a season, averaging three per carry. Empty backfield for Nance, trips to the right on first down. At Oak Park's 41, Nance snaps, screen pass, Morris to the 45, and he is stuffed right away. Boom, Go, here he goes, Malik Munson, the senior, meeting Morris right at the catch. You know, just trying to get some quick yards after that first down. Unfortunately, though, Oak Park just is not fooled by the screen. He has two guys waiting for him right away, and they tackle him for a loss. You heard Stoney in the background mention another flag on the play. And it looks like it's going to be on the Lakers again. It'll set them back now. They'll redo second down. Second and 15 at the Laker 40. It's at the Oak Park 47. Snap to Nance out of the gun. Looking. Pocket collapses. Rolls through his right at the 50. Throws it out to Morris and just a little bit ahead of him. Maybe a foot ahead of Marquise Morris at the 33 yard line. Brings up third and long. Yeah, unfortunately, just looking like it was a bit of a miscommunication right there. Looked like Nance was expecting Morris to drift up field a little bit more. Meanwhile, Morris looked like he was kind of hovering more so around the sticks. Yeah, kind of cut in, maybe like he was going for uh, a short post route or possibly a comeback, and Nance expecting to go a little bit further up the field. That pass a little bit short. Brings up third and 15 for the Lakers. 5-14 to go in the first and no score. Nance takes the snap, launches one down the field, and man! And it is caught by Elijah Durham. He gets down to the one as Rick Nance delivers another beautiful ball to 14. I mean, just look at this block right here from Josh Tate. Just incredible. That buys him the time to just deliver this beautiful pass to Durham. And once again, like just a deep strike to Durham. And that has really been 
something beautiful to watch this year between Nance and Durham. That sets up first and goal. Haven't seen that connection in a few weeks. Durham did not play a couple first weeks ago. For the Last week, not too many connections, but there the bomb squad back in full action. Snap to Nance. He'll hand it off. Up the gut. Reaches to the line. Does not quite get there. Gets right back down to the one yard line. Just an inch away for West Bloomfield. The bar ball carrier Jackson Azu getting his first carry in a while for West Bloomfield. Yeah, really getting about as close as you can get to the end zone right there. They're really looking at about second and inches right here as they try and get this in. He had one varsity carry last year for one yard. On that play, just about matched it. Maybe a half yard gain on first and goal, but he's in the backfield with Brandon Davis Swain. Snap, handoff, Azu pushing, pushing. Does he have it? Oak Park matches. Yeah, I mean, really, this Oak Park Azu defense is standing carry. up big time right here no in the goal line the situation. Play. Not stifling or not giving up anything right whatsoever, and really just stifling okay, this West Bloomfield nice. offense. Two plays, one yard to go, and nothing for West Bloomfield. It is Jimmy's versus Joe's right now, deep in the red zone. Third down for West Bloomfield at the Oak Park one, tied up at, with three and a half to go in the first quarter at zero. Low snap. Nats, handoff, Dunton pushes, and he gets in. Touchdown, WB. Yeah, really playing no games there whatsoever. Bringing in Brandon Davis Wayne as a blocker right there. To show anyone right there, if you wanted to meet our running back in the gap, you're going to have to deal with the punisher first. Yeah, puts him in there as maybe he's going to be that fullback, take the football, but no. That's a key block at the perfect time and gets Nigel Dunton into the end zone. Justin Lakers Ward now up six to zero. Justin Ward will come in for the PAT on the season. He is 29 for 33. That is a fast improvement over last season. Kick is up and the kick is good. Lakers the seven, Oak Park good. zero. It's Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes seven. FM. You're watching and listening to your home for Greater West Bloomfield News. Civic Center TV and 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake. West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake. 89.3 Lakes FM. Key plays for the Lakers on that previous drive. It all began... As we've seen so many times this season, the bomb squad, Rick Nance, tosses it down to his favorite guy, Elijah Durham, and he gets inside the five. Took a couple of plays for the Lakers to make that turn into something, but finally, Rick Nance hands that football off to Nigel Dunton and gets a great block from the Punisher. Lakers seven, Oak Park zero, with 4.13 to go in the first quarter, and they'll kick the ball off. and. Oak Park will get their second try on the offensive Ward side tonight after a fumble in the red zone ended their first drive and set up ultimately what was a scoring drive for West Bloomfield. Two back again for, for Oak Park. Rondre Austin alongside Quinton Blakely. Wards, short kickoff, lands about the 20-yard line, takes a friendly bounce. For West Bloomfield down to about the 12. Recovered by Oak Park. They'll get back up to about the 20-yard line. Not too much loss. Not much gain on that return for Oak Park. Yeah, I mean, really bobbling the ball on the return again. We saw that from them last time, albeit a different returner. But I mean, maybe these these this raining conditions, these wet, slippery conditions are starting to get worse out there. A young team still learning to play effective football and know how to chase a football. Blakely just a sophomore, 5'7", 160 pounds, but got a bright future ahead of him in the OAA Blue Division with Oak Park. First down and 10, this drive will begin for the Knights at their 22-yard line on the right hash. Really good series last time around for Artrell Guyton and company. Just a bobbled handoff stopped their progress, but they were rushing the ball very effective to start off this ball game. Much like that first series, two running backs alongside the quarterback. Snap, but it's gonna be stopped. Flag on the field, we'll take a look at what that is. Likely gonna be a procedure call. That flag landing at the line. Yeah, and really in Oak Park's shoes right now, you can't afford to be pushed behind the sticks, so these are crucial mistakes when you're already playing. Equipment violation on Oak Park. Five-yard penalty. 
First down. Penalty will set Oak Park on, back to the, to the 17 yard line from the 22. So it'll be a second down and 15 for the Knights as they get the second drive going. A great coaching job that's been done by Greg Carter. Look, you have a lot of success. You make it to nine straight playoffs. You get a ton of praise. You should be getting a lot more when you're rebuilding a program like he's doing. Handoff gets a couple of yards back to about the 20 yard line. We'll set up a third down. Yeah, really, and now this is gonna be a crucial down right here. You're back behind the sticks because of that penalty. And against a team like the Lakers, you don't want to be facing third and longs. Ivan Burrow, the freshman running back, got his number called on that play. This is a very young Oak Park team, but having a very good season. Three wins this year, they got four freshman and sophomore running back. So underclassmen in the skill positions, making a big impact. Second down and long for Oak Park. Guyton in the shotgun, one man in the backfield to his left is Quinton Blakely, and two split out wide to the left side. They'll shift their tight end, Tyler Holly, to the quarterback's left. Snap to Guyton, he'll hand that ball off. Blakely gets a nice little break, back to the 30-yard line, near the line to gain with the reach. That'll set up third down and short. All of a sudden, Oak Park back in business. Yeah, really, Quinton Blakely is, is shining right now. His, his vision is incredible, and as well as his acceleration. I'm really impressed so far by his play. Will Espy for the Lakers chasing him down. Another young player, a sophomore for WB, having a big impact in 2023. One of those guys that's caught the eye of Kevin Jakeway, the defensive coordinator, certainly of head coach Zach Hilbers singing his praises all throughout the season. Big defensive play coming up for West Bloomfield. Third down and one to go for Oak Park at their 31-yard line. Two men in the backfield. Eye formation and looked like they jumped. That'll set them back a few yards on third down. Yeah, that looked like it was uh, Malik Brown, the tight end right there. Jumping off, you know, a little antsy. Seeing Brandon Davis Wayne across from him. And now you're set up with a third and medium and really going to be forced into a passing situation for the first time tonight. We'll see if they go with that, though, Matt. I don't know if I agree with, with that being the strategy. They've been content to run the football. It's going to really come down, I think, the blocking on this play. They're able to get a little bit outside the tackles, get a little bit of an opening. These are some shifty, athletic running backs that can turn a little bit of space into a lot of gain. We'll see what they do on third down and six. 2.19 to go in the first quarter. Lakers seven, Knights zero. Snap, handoff. Takes it outside the tackles, and he is met at the line of scrimmage. Big, big play by Justin Tyler. Strong name. Yeah, really just a, an impressive tackle right there. Really just a textbook tackle and what you want to see from your safety coming up and run support right there. Just really, I can't really describe a better way to form tackle right there. Just look at the, and the replay. I mean, just he perfect. just laid him out, got him back to the line of scrimmage, kept his eye on his man-to-man -man target and made a big play. That is a senior move by the senior safety, Justin Tyler. Sets up fourth down, so Quinton Blakely will stay on the field to punt this ball away to West Bloomfield. 90 seconds left in the first quarter, a lofting snap to Blakely. Gets a good punt, though. Bounces down around the 48-yard line, takes a Laker-friendly Laker roll, fun. and that's where West Bloomfield will begin their second offensive drive as we take a look at another Laker making a big impact on the season, Blake Simmons on your screen, young linebacker for West Bloomfield. Yeah, really, we've seen this young linebacking course step up big time this season in Kari Jackson's absence. Get all the latest news and headlines from across the greater West Bloomfield area each and every day of your work week on the Splash Live, Monday through Friday, beginning at 8.30 a.m. and all throughout the week and throughout the First evenings on CivicCenterTV.com. Your stories from your hometown on your community media. First down and 10 for the Lakers at the Oak Park 47-yard line. Flowers in motion, double motions, a handoff. In the backfield, gets up to the line of scrimmage and a couple yards, Josh Tate takes it on first down. Yeah, really a good run right there. Kind of trying to fool the defense a little bit right there. Flowers and Morris have been running the ball so well these past few weeks, you know, try and slip someone through the ball to Tyler right there. And a good run. Ball carrier there actually is Khalid Muhammad getting his fifth 
carry on the season for the Lakers. A couple yards gained on first down, brings up second with just under a minute to play in the first quarter. Gain of about four on first down. Nance takes the snap, quarterback draw, rolls outside, gets to the 40-yard line, to the 35, on his feet, trying to break away, 32-yard line, and taken down out of bounds. It really seems like the Lakers are trying to make it an, a point of emphasis to run the ball with Nance. Maybe it's a weakness that they've seen in the Oak Park defense, but so far, he is really running the ball tremendously tonight. Opened up a great hole, and Oak Park just able to grip the pink towel on Rick Nance and pull him down toward the sideline. That is fair game. They ultimately make the tackle, forcing the quarterback out of bounds with 15 seconds to go in the first. First down and 10 for the Lakers at Oak Park's 32-yard line. Nance in the shotgun, two men in the backfield and two split out far to the left for the Lakers. Nance, jet sweep, Cam Flowers to the 30-yard line, to the 25-yard line. First down and more, but a flag on the field. Cam Flowers gonna march into the end zone, but we'll see if that counts on a Laker touchdown. Yeah, likely coming back Here's on a the hold right there, which is really unfortunate, and it's just gonna set you further back behind the sticks. But fortunately, the deep ball connection seems to be going. Showed some great patience on that play. We'll see what the call is before we take a look at it. It is, in fact, going to be a hold that will set West Bloomfield Kenya back. Kennedy. First down. We'll have to do that all over again. Look at the patience from Cam Flowers, kind of directing his players to block him up the field. It's a little bit too much action. You see that hold right there. Just enough of a hold for Caleb Caudill to set this play back. So Lakers will have a first down and 15. Just a few seconds to play in the first quarter. Lakers seven, Oak Park zero in the regular season finale at the Swamp. Cloudy Friday evening in West Bloomfield to end the regular season. First and 15, with five seconds left in the first, a whistle and a stoppage. Looks like they're gonna make some sort of a substitution. Elijah Durham has to come off the field. Looks like a uniform issue, potentially. That's the substitution that will be made. Marquise Morris checks in for the Lakers as 14 goes and has a conversation with Zach Hilbers. Nance in the shotgun, one man in the backfield, and motion is Morris. Nance takes the snap, steps up in the pocket. Now he's got to go on the run. Takes it to the right side, to the 40-yard line. Still on his feet, to the 35, to the 30-yard line, and out of bounds. That in the first quarter, a little bit of a shove after, but it's all clean just before the sideline. That will be the end of the first quarter. Seven for West Bloomfield and zero for Oak Park. And so far, an exciting game for West Bloomfield. We'll take a break, come back with more on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The first quarter comes to an end. Lakers up seven to nothing. As you see, the night sky is still pretty light outside. Lights are coming on as the clouds roll in. Normally about this time, you'd start seeing it get pretty dark in West Bloomfield. Not the case right now after the end of the one because the early start tonight. This game kicked off at six o'clock. Normally these games at seven o'clock and that the reason for that. This game normally was going to be at Oak Park High School and Ultimately, both schools deciding to move this game to West Bloomfield for logistical for Lakers reasons. Lakers will begin the ball, begin with the ball in the second quarter, put 12 more minutes on the clock. And a second down in Oak Park territory. Ball placed at the 29-yard line of the Knights. Nance, two in the backfield. A little bit of extra motion from Morris. It doesn't get called. Oak Park doesn't believe it. Snap, handoff to Dunton, gets up the middle to the 20-yard line, breaks free, down to the 15-yard line, gets a reach and a little bit of luck. A lot of good for the Lakers. Yeah, really just a, a nice tackle the right there for uh, Deion Cleary right there by uh, 
able to wrap up Nigel Dunton. He almost spins off the tackle, but he's able he's able to bring him down. And Oak Park's opinion better late than Holy. never on the flag on the call. Offense. Maybe that's one of those ball don't lie sort down. of situations against West Bloomfield because they thought that Marquise Morris had jumped. Instead, it's going to be a hold. Nonetheless, Oak Park gets their wish for the flag as we see Dunton navigate up the middle there. And looks like just a little bit of extra action on the right side of the offensive line as he gets to the point of attack. I'll set the Lakers back. We'll have to redo it on second down. Same formation as the previous play. Nance will take the snap, looking down the field. He's going to launch that ball toward the sideline, and it is just outside the reach of Caleb Caudill, incomplete. Yeah, really just trying to get all those penalty yards back at once. Unable to come down with it right there, just a little bit off to the side. But not necessarily the worst throw right there because he really put it in a position where either Caudill was going to get it or no one was. Trying to maintain some sense of balance, this Lakers team. You see Coach Hilbers in his first season at the helm. Lakers about 60-40 in favor of run on the season. Have run the ball 240 times compared to the 165 passing plays. Third and long for Knanz, takes a snap, rolls out to his left side at the 45, looking down the field, launches the ball long, looking for the end zone, and bobbled, broken away by Oak Park. Quinton Blakely gets in the middle of that one as Rick Nance looked toward Elijah Durham in the corner. Yeah, really looking like the flag situation is starting to even up now. West Bloomfield drawing two holding calls in this, just these past few plays, but now it seems like they're gonna get some of that yardage back with this pass interference. See the official signaling for a pass interference. They are gonna call that on Oak Park. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty, still third down. So that Gives the West Bloomfield Lakers a little bit of extra cushion on third down. Don't have to get nearly as far. Maybe this time, like you said, Matt, they won't be trying to collect all those yards back at once and just go for the line of the game, as you see. Here's the reason why. Now, Blakely's got a good look on that. It's a catchable ball for Elijah Durham, but there's one element missing there. You gotta make a move back. You gotta make what's called a football move. Gotta look back at the football or give that wide receiver one last little shot, didn't happen. So now third and short. Snap, handoff, it's gonna be a quarterback draw. Nats gets the first down and more inside the 15 and down to the 11-yard line and a great gainer on the quarterback draw. Yeah, really, Nance really showing off his running ability tonight. Already, I believe, at about six carries on the night. He's averaging pretty close to 10 yards per carry, and he's really and playing phenomenal. The at the Oak Park 11 yard. Second time tonight, the Lakers in the Oak Park red zone, one for one on the night, getting into the end zone on their first offensive drive to score. Lakers seven, Oak Park zero, snap, handoff, jet play. Marquise Morris escapes, still on his feet at the five yard line, reaching and gets in. Touchdown, WB. Yeah, really just a phenomenal run right there for Morris. Looked like he was initially gonna take the, or take the run up, the gut, and go inside. Notice that there wasn't really anything there. Bounces it to the outside and has the speed and acceleration to really get to the, to the pylon, beat the defender there, and just puts his shoulder into him for good measure. One last guy to get by was Malik Munson. Marquise Morris, not at all afraid, shows his toughness and gets into the end zone once again. A key player for the Lakers one week ago with two rushing touchdowns against Southfield AT and in his first of the night tonight for West Bloomfield. Fourth touchdown on the season for number two. A snap, the hold, the kick is up for Ward, and it is good. Lakers 14, Oak Park zero. It's Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakers, Lakes FM. Today I'm gonna tell you about sportsmanship because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> My mom says that. Listen to the referees. It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chabon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. 
Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com. Or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Take another look at that scoring play on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The Flash, Marquise Morris getting shifty, getting patient, and getting tough. Laying one into Malik Munson. Gets in the end zone. Lakers up 14 to 0 with just under 11 minutes to play in this first half against Oak Park. Justin Ward in to kick this ball off. Looked like there was a penalty during our break. Lakers going to kick off from plus territory at the 45. This time a boomer down to the goal line, covered by Oak Park. Takes up to the 15, to the 20-yard line, up toward the 25, gonna be stuffed around the 23. A little bit of extra push, but the whistle gonna terminate that at the 23-yard line. They're really firing a line shot to try and pin Oak Park deep right there. I honestly would have went with an onside kick right there, you know, kind of kicking in plus territory. You kind of play the field position there, and who cares if they start off at the 40. Nonetheless, not going to be the greatest starting position for Oak Park deep in their own territory. But for Lakers, a defensive front that's been tough to get by all season long. They've given a few to, to Oak Park, and Oak Park looking to finally get some payoff on that rushing game that's been playing pretty good football so far. 14 to nothing in favor of West Bloomfield early on in the second quarter. First down and 10 for the Knights. Guyton hands that ball off to Ivan Burrow. Gets around the corner to the 30-yard line, just by the line to gain and out of bounds. Yeah, really looking like he offers more of a physical running game as opposed to Bart or Blakely. And really right there, putting his shoulder down and delivering two nice trucks on his way out of bounds. Just a really impressive physical run right there for Oak Park. This is a young team, but a team that's showing some serious football IQ early on tonight against the West Bloomfield Lakers, and it's helping them out in the rushing game. They move the chains, first down and 10 for Oak Park at their 35-yard line. Guyton hands it off again to Burrow, and this time not going to get much of anything, maybe a yard on first down. Yeah, really, Gabriel gets to him pretty much immediately at the line of scrimmage, but he's still able to be spun around for just a few, no on maybe one or two yards. And that's impressive considering how Gabriel has been able to bring guys down at the line of scrimmage so far this year. About Talk about this Oak Park team, tough, physical, willing to get after it. And look, they haven't had exactly the greatest season. They haven't had the greatest couple of seasons, but this is an up and coming program, much like Southfield A&T in the past. It's not a matter of, of if, it's a matter of when this team takes that big jump forward. Second and long for Oak Park. Two men in the backfield in this I formation alongside the quarterback, Guyton. Lakers jump. That's going to benefit Oak Park. They'll move forward a few yards on second down. Yeah, really, these are the situations that Oak Park is trying to get themselves into, those plus situations where they're able to run the ball, you know, really put themselves in position. You know, Lakers are going to be guessing, are they going to short yardage, go with the runner pass? You know, give guys like Quinn and Blakely the opportunity to possibly on the rip one off. Yeah, just a Second real down. quick jump, quick, quick jump for the West Bloomfield Lakers. Ends up advancing Oak Park five yards forward on second down. That will definitely benefit this two running back system. Hard count for Artrell Guyton. Takes the snap, hands that ball off, going to Michael Reed, and he's going to get met pretty much right at the line of scrimmage as he tries to get outside the tackles. Yeah, Jeremiah Benson right there getting into the backfield. And really a key tackle right there and able to bring him back or down back behind the line of scrimmage. Really just a crucial stop right there for the Lakers run defense. Third down and short for Oak Park down 14 to zero with 8.45 and ticking left in the first half at West Bloomfield High School. The Lakers trying to get those last bits and pieces of playoff points. They're in the top 10 in Division One, hoping to position themselves among the best of the best in the state of Michigan come playoff time. Oak Park trying to answer, keep themselves in this football game, maybe advance themselves into the top 32 in their own division. 8-18 to go in the first half, down 14-0 are the Knights on third down and short. Guyton 
Fakes the handoff, gonna take it himself. Met by SB in the backfield, hit and then taken down. Not gonna get to the line to gain, and it'll be fourth down for the Knights. Yeah, it really looked like some confusion right there. Looked like someone, yeah, 34 was supposed to take the handoff. And really, some of that youth and inexperience at the quarterback position is starting to show for Oak Park. A high IQ play for SB. He goes for the hit. The quarterback advances through the hit, but he just keeps wrapping those hands around the quarterback's legs and ultimately comes up with a tackle. That's only going to be fourth down and one. So here come the Knights. Gut check time. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Two men in the backfield alongside the quarterback. Take the snap. We'll hand the ball off. Up the middle. Pushing for it. Right at the line to gain. Does he have enough? It looks like he does. That time it's Nehemiah Black who took the snap. He handed that football off to Quinton Blakely. And they just get enough to move the chains. Yeah, eventually the Lakers defense was able to push him back. But really that initial push was enough to get them the first down. But it's that really going to be interesting now going forward with now they're really on their emergency quarterback for their emergency quarterback on top of that. Yeah, injuries forced Artrell Guyton to become the quarterback. He was a wide receiver, defensive back, and all-around athlete. He had to take over as the leader of this offense. Only played six out of eight games, and now they're on to their emergency quarterback, Nehemiah Black. Black takes the snap, will hand that ball off on the outside. Pushing oh, forward as Ivan Burrow gets one yard on first down. Yeah, really, this run game is off to a tremendous start for Oak Park, and now we're going to see them try and lean on it even more with the unfortunate injury to Garden. Another wide receiver in playing quarterback, but Nehemiah Black, talented in his own right, and got that same sort of veteran presence as that backup quarterback, Artrell Guyton. A junior is Nehemiah Black, Guyton a senior for this Oak Park team. Second down and nine for the Knights, approaching Laker territory at the 46-yard line. Two men in the backfield, two split out right for Oak Park. Snap, handoff, it's a delayed handoff and a pitch to Blakely. He's gonna get met in the backfield, but pushes forward with a reach. We'll get about one on second down. Yeah, really running the speed option right there. Been an impressive play right there by Blakely, making the man miss right there. Just really just impressive display right here from Blakely tonight, and I expect him to be a good player going forward. And defensively, Jonathan Gabriel sticking with it. A great read, as you said, by Nehemiah Black to pull that football at the last very second as Gabriel leaps, but he sticks Pulling with it, shifts around, and ultimately cleans that up, so it's just a one-yard gainer. Third down and seven for Oak Park with 525 and ticking to go in the first half. 14 for West Bloomfield and zero for the Oak Park Knights out of the OAA Blue Division. Artrell Guyton back in at quarterback. Two split out to either side for Oak Park. Snap and a whistle. Right away, it's on the Lakers' side, possibly a jump. Substitution ball issues. 12 men on the field, on the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Instead, that called from the opposite side, but it's on Oak Park, as you heard. Too many guys on the field. Miscommunication will set the Knights back on third down. Yeah, I would like to attribute that to, you know, the kind of turnover at the quarterback yeah, position, as is, 13. and then you throw in an injury on top of it. Probably some confusion there. Third down and long for Greg Carter and the Oak Park Knights. You see the assistants on the field. All together, this coaching staff has been doing a great job this season, turning this program around step by step. Third and long, snapping a handoff. Up the gut, gets back just before the line of scrimmage, and that's Blakely ultimately where that will end guard. for Quentin Blakely. Sets up a fourth down. This ball is going to go back to the Lakers. Yeah, really just the unfortunate penalty setting them back behind the sticks right there. If it wasn't for that penalty, I would probably expect Oak Park to be going for it right here, but now, because of that, giving the ball back with or to West Bloomfield, with likely not the chance to get it back again before the half. Here you're seeing Lakers D-line coach giving his guys props. They're sticking with it. Look, no matter what, whether Oak Park gets nothing or Oak Park gets something, you treat every play like its own individual moment. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. That's what the Lakers are doing, and now they're going to get that ball back with four and a half to play in the half. West Bloomfield 14, Oak Park 0, and Nigel Dunton, the former Southfield A&T Warrior, 
back to receive for the Lakers. A whistle before the play. Delay the game on the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. As you heard, gonna set Oak Park back even further. Maybe a little bit more of a benefit to them, gives them a little bit more space to try to position that football. But for West Bloomfield, also a benefit. May not have to go as far with a running back out there to punt the ball away. Quinton Blakely, the kicker, the running back, and the punter for this Oak Park Knights team. Four minutes left in the first half. Another lob and another decent punt. Gets some hang time about the 30-yard line down to Dunton. Covers at the 25. Jukes gets to the 30-yard line, down to the 35, still on his feet. And ultimately gonna take, get taken down to the 34-yard line. Yeah, really an impressive punt right there. And really an impressive catch on the punt by Dunton. He makes the first guy miss, and he's able to rip off a nice return to set the Lakers up with good Damian field position here. Yeah, just Jukes, Alex Patterson, the freshman, right out of his shoes to turn what should have been nothing on that recovery into about three, maybe four yards. It sets the Lakers up in pretty good territory at their 34-yard line with four minutes. Just under four minutes to go in the first half. Lakers 14, Oak Park 0. Lakers put up 28 in the first half on Southfield A&T a week ago, looking to put up 21, maybe even more. A few minutes left in tonight's first half. Nance, the shotgun snap. Handoff, gonna go to Cam Flowers. Gets outside of the 40-yard line, the 45 to 50. Down to the 45, the 40, the 35, breaks with the 30. Shifting inside, runs into his own guy, but goes down the 25, oh, and big man. break for Cam Flowers. Yeah, that'll get the offense on schedule. That's one thing for sure. Just an incredible run right there for Flowers. Just, I mean, just look at the acceleration right here. As soon as he gets through the gap, able to just get a nice run and really almost kind of looked like it may have been a horse collar grab right there to slow him up. Kind of tiptoes and do -si does as he gets ready for the big dance coming up next week for first playoff time. Lakers. A big play with just over three minutes left in the first half. Puts the Lakers just outside the red zone. Snap, hand off the Tate, shifts inside into the seam. Flag on the play as he approaches the 20. Yeah, that flag coming out almost immediately. So maybe an offensive lineman got off early or no, nope, it looks like it's going to be a hold. That's going to set the Lakers just outside of field goal range now. That's gonna set the Lakers back a little while, a little ways, but still got plenty of field to work with and only gonna be a second down. With three minutes and 31 seconds to go in the first half. Lakers 14, Oak Park zero. We should take a look at the Lakers coaching staff and doing a fantastic job in the first season under Zach Hilbers and seeing the coach on the left side of your screen. A lot of turnover in the head coaching position, but a lot of these coaches returning Sticking with this team. Snap to Nance. Looking to the sideline. Throws it over to the 30-yard line. Caught. And near the sideline, up to the 20-yard line, down to the 15-yard line. Just tiptoes out of bounds. Jaden Allos gets the first down. Yeah, really unfortunate right there. I don't, I'm not sure if he stopped out of bounds, but no form of review. We'll see right here if he did or not. But just a great job of making guys miss after the catch. Pass the line to gain just enough. Yeah, and just right there just enough on the sideline a great stop on that replay dave scott calvin brown at master control pushing all the buttons tonight as the lakers getting into the red zone hand off a few yards gain for josh, josh tate, tate and he goes here. down on first down yeah and really right there you see at the end of the play alex walton just showing what that offensive front has been able to do for the lakers these past few weeks just be physical and really get a good push off the ball to help get this run game going. That's a hell of an offensive Lakers. lineman, the right guard, a 4.0 student, a senior at WB, and that number 74 is for a reason. Wearing number 74 and loving memory of his late Nana, who passed away at 74 years old. Second down for the Lakers at the 15. Snap to Nance. Looking into the end zone, going for it, and it looked like it was batted away and incomplete. Yeah, really a tight window right there. Pocket collapsing. Nance just coming to the decision. He's got to get rid of this pass. Puts it to where only his receiver is going to get it and live to see another down. I was looking for Caleb Caudill, and if that ball's not bobbled, that ball's not tipped near the line, you're looking at six points for 17. He went after that football afterward. Nice show of sportsmanship to get that back to the officiating crew. So we get ready for second down and 10 at the 15. 
One minute and 54 seconds to go in the first, in first half. Snap and a handoff. Over the 15-yard line, down to the 10-yard line, into the end zone again. Marquise Morris on fire. Touchdown, WB. Yeah, I mean, really just, I don't know if he has to pay rent or not the way that he's been living in the end zone these past few weeks, but just a perfectly executed play right here as he goes untouched into the end zone. Just, I mean, again, credit to the offensive line because they have been playing tremendously these past few weeks. Marquise Morris, two touchdowns last week against Southfield a and and two in the first half to end the regular season. We still got 25 minutes of football left to play. West Bloomfield 20, Oak Park zero with Justin Ward in for the PAT. Justin Ward to attempt the extra point. Nigel Dunton, the wide receiver, has been his holder all season long. Snap, the hold, the kick, and the points. It's through. Lakers 21, Oak Park 0. You're watching and listening to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Follow us on Twitter at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. You see again, Marquise Morris getting six for the Lakers. Gets right inside that block in the backfield and into the end zone, right into the corner. Looked just like the last time around that. Yeah, I mean, really, again, credit to the offensive line for their performances past few weeks. We'll see all their performances all throughout the playoffs. Playoff football on its way next week. We'll find out where the Lakers are going to be, likely at West Bloomfield High School. We'll find out their opponents on Sunday. The next week, Friday, it's on to playoff time. Likely right back here on the, at the Swamp. Laker football exclu exclusively broadcast on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Keep up to date on the team all season long and all playoffs long on civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports. 21 to nothing for the Lakers after the score late in the first half. We'll kick it off to the Knights. Recovered at the 20-yard line on the high hang time kick. Down to the 25, the 30-yard line up to the 32. And that's where Oak Park will begin this drive after another booming kickoff from Ward. They're really almost getting themselves into trouble right there on that kickoff. But a nice return right there for George Butler. Now set up the Oak Park Knights in pretty nice territory. They're able to get a little bit of movement last time around, but those really penalties that set them back. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about how penalties and really those mental errors are a key thing to watch for West Bloomfield. But that really applies for any team in a, in a football game. And that's something that Oak Park has struggled with tonight. Two minutes and 17 seconds to go in this first half. Oak Park now spotting West Bloomfield 21 points. Southfield a and a week ago spotted the Lakers 28 in the first half. That's just how good this Lakers offense is. They could put up 28 against the number 11 team in Division I. Put up 21 against Oak Park so far in the final game of the regular season. The Knights will start off on their 32-yard line. Guyton in that quarterback trips out to the right. Snap and handoff. They'll run it again. And they'll get stopped again. Wrapped up right away. West Bloomfield's Kamari Pittman getting on top of that. Yeah, I mean, Kamari Pittman is just living in the backfield tonight, just having a tremendous game, flashing in the run game, and really stepping up. Want something to go kaboom? You send in the tank. Tank Pittman right there alongside the punisher, Brandon Davis Swain, forces second down. Nothing really lost by Southfield a and on that first down as we have a timeout on the field. We'll be with you all throughout the playoff season. West Bloomfield Lakers heading into playoff time next week. The final regular season game tonight. Then it's on to the Division I playoffs for all the marbles. 32 teams will get in, but only one will be the champion. The Lakers last season going out in the first round on this field this coming season. Their placement going to be a little bit different as they'll come into playoff time with two losses as long as they're able to take care of business and keep this 21 to nothing lead going. We'll find out where the Lakers will play next week Friday on Sunday, 6 o'clock selection show on Valley Sports Detroit. And of course, you'll have all your Laker broadcasts all throughout the playoffs on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. 
Stay up to date with the Lakers on CivicCenterTV.com slash Lakersports this week in Laker football, your weekly look into the Lakers playoff, Lakers playoff football team. And it's also where you'll find links to each and every one of our broadcasts in case you got to go out and about on this Friday night in Greater West Bloomfield and come back around. You'll always find us at CivicCenterTV.com. Second down handoff to Blakely. He's getting chased, running around, and that's where it's going to end. He's going to lose about seven yards as a slew of Blakely Lakers force him back. Yeah, again, looking like a little bit more confusion up front on that handoff. And again, Tank Pittman blowing up the play once again. And really, unfortunately, Blakely is not able to rip anything off right there as he's tackled for a loss. There is a flag on the play as Lakers come toward the sideline. Brandon Davis Swain going to talk things over with his head ball coach, a guy that's got a lot of praise for number 11, arguably the top recruited player on this team headed to Colorado, Kevin Jakeway, you see on the left side of your screen, the defensive coordinator in his first season at the helm. And man, he had some tough shoes to fill, filling in for longtime defensive coordinator Tyrese Grice, head coach for a few years for the Lakers as well. Plenty of other newsmakers from around town talking with us each and every week on the Splash Live, Monday through Friday, beginning at 8.30 a.m., running all throughout your morning and replays in the afternoons and evenings. Always available on civiccentertv.com. Your stories from your hometown on your community media. I had some great conversations this week, including with one of the Lakers' assistant coaches, Nick O'Shea, a former Laker player just a few years ago. Started a company recently to work with college athletes on their NIL deals and Throwing a big party tomorrow at West Bloomfield Middle School, the House Divided NIL Watch Party, supporting Samaj Morgan and Peyton Harvey, football player and cheerleader at the University of Michigan, and Trey Mosley, wide receiver at Michigan State. Buck 20 to go in the first half. Lakers 21, Oak Park 0, third down and long for the Knights at their 31-yard line, 29-yard line. Looks like a jump see which side they'll call that on both sides of course pointing toward each other as the officials head toward the football and talk this one over yeah it's going to be interesting to see i couldn't quite tell who jumped first it looks like they're pointing to the lakers side so it's going to kind of give back the yardage that this oak park offense just lost it looks yeah, it like. seemed like one of those i saw this Get what ball. did you see okay most of us saw it was an offside that's exactly what it's going to be called An encroachment will move oak park back closer toward the original line of scrimmage on third down. Yeah, and we haven't really seen them throw the ball tonight, but I wouldn't be surprised if they try and do a quick dump off right here to Blakely. Trips out to the right on the strong side for Oak Park and one man in the backfield with the quarterback, Guyton. Snap, handoff to Burrow and Guyton drops it. That's gonna push them back as Kamari Pittman gets on top of the quarterback, dances around and celebrates an upcoming fourth down. Yeah, it looked like there was some sort of read on, or like a play action or a read option on that play. And just unfortunately unable to come through on the handoff. Yeah, Ivan Burrow was holding on to that football. Looked like he wanted to run away with it. And then the last second, Guyton took his read a little bit later, pulled that football back. A little bit too late and ended up popping it out of the hands Lakers of his running back to set up fourth down. Timeout for the West Bloomfield Lakers in their final regular season game of the season. And this is where you start to perfect things. We'll take a break. Come back next on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Take a break and tune in to the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Siobhan as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The sunshine now gone on this partly cloudy night. As we near the end of the first half, a punt goes off to the Lakers. They get up to about the 45-yard line with just under 40 seconds to go in the first half. And really, Nigel Dunn is doing something that we've seen from the skill position group all year, and it's just really why they've been so successful, refusing to go down and just fighting for as many extra yards that they can get. Officiating crew switching out the football. There's a little bit of moisture on this Friday night, not nearly as much as we've seen 
over the last few weeks with the Lakers getting a good test with Mother Nature playing a factor after what's been an unseasonably warm season for the most part, but that's not really affected quarterback Rick Nance. Little over 90 seconds to go in the first, first half. Lakers 21, Oak Park 0 in this OAA crossover game. The Lakers from the red, the Oak Park Knights from the blue. Both teams in third place in their respective divisions. Nats got all the time in the world. Floats this one to Davis. Swain caught at the 40, down to the 30. On his feet at the 25 to 20. Sideline to the 10 and finally shoved out of bounds down at about the nine yard line. Yeah, really just a beautiful pass right there from Nance. Just lofting it over the defense to Brandon Davis Swain. And really right there, Brandon Davis Swain flashing his athleticism and showing just how fast he can get up right there. And it's just effortless. Rick Nance. He, had, he didn't have a pocket. He had a luxury suite. That offensive line opening it up. And Brandon Davis Swain just gets right outside toward the sideline into the boundary and picks one up. A well-executed play all across the board. First and goal, Lakers at the 10. Sets the Lakers up at the Oak Park 10. Third time in the red zone tonight. Snap, hand off to Tate. Shifts inside, pushing forward at the five. And that's where he'll be stopped, but a five-yard gainer on first and goal. Yeah, really just a good play right there to get yourself in good position inside of the 10. And now I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Lakers dial up a run right here for Rick Nance. The Lakers have been excellent in the red zone all season long coming into this game. They've at least put points on the board 81.82% of the time. They've gotten a touchdown on two out of three of every one of their red zone drives. Nance takes a snap, quarterback draw, goes inside. And going to be taken back a couple yards from the line of scrimmage. Third down and goal on a stop that involves a bunch of Knights, including freshman George Butler. Yeah, really just, it looked like after having him run the ball so well tonight on them, the, the Oak Park defense steps up and just really doesn't offer anything for Nance right there on the run. Underclassmen coming up big, George Butler, a freshman, Michael Reed, a sophomore, and Ivan Burrow, a sophomore, the three key tacklers on that play. Time ticking in the first half, 20 seconds, and dropping down for Rick Nance and company on third and goal. 21 to zip. Nance, quarterback draw, gets a hold, gets six points. Touchdown, WB. Touchdown. And really just doing a good job of not leaving any time on the clock to give them a chance to match that touchdown. A little bit of laundry on that touchdown. Saw a flag go up in the end zone. Nance gets a great hole and a missed tackle. And then gets into the end zone, but didn't seem to be all too celebratory as he got in there, but likely that flag gonna be on Oak Park as you see the quarterback go to the sideline. Lakers 27, Oak Park zero, with 11 seconds to go in the first half, and Justin Ward in for the PAT. Yeah, and really just a huge touchdown right there as you get the ball to start the second half. PAT here, snap, kick is up and looks like it's wide. It's no good. 27 for the Lakers, Oak Park zero. It's Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV, and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. As we shift over to the officiating crew, you see a flag on the field deep in Laker territory after the PAT was no good for Justin Ward. We'll see what ultimately that penalty is likely going to be impacting on the kickoff. We saw earlier a penalty on Oak Park that gave the Lakers an opportunity to kick off from Oak Park's 45-yard line and set up the Laker defense really well. We'll see what that's going to be in just a few moments here. But in the meantime, as we get ready for the end of the regular season, we get ready for playoff time as well. Playoff football all across the MHSA Division I postseason. 
for the West Bloomfield Lakers right here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. All begins next week, likely on Friday, but we'll find out Football. over the weekend. Personal foul on the defense. Also, dead ball. Personal foul on the kicking team. Number three is ejected. So, personal fouls on both sides. Luck, luck, likely a lot of extracurricular activity in the Lakers. You hear that? Number three, that's Nigel Dunton. Last week just got a sideline warning, got sent to the sideline after some extracurriculars this time around. He is gone, and because he's ejected, that means a suspension for that first playoff game. Yeah, really, that's just unfortunate to see. We saw a penalty for what was either running into or roughing the kicker earlier in the game, but I wonder what that was for. I talked to Coach Hilbers, who you see discussing that with an official. Last week was very happy to ultimately see Nigel Dunton not ejected for some extra conversation with his opponent. And this week doesn't seem to agree with that. We didn't see it, so can't really give any sort of an assessment on that. You see Alex Walton also talking that over with his head coach. Ultimately, they're going to have to move forward without Nigel Dunton. With 11 seconds to go in the first half, Good thing for the Lakers is they'll get to redo that PAT because of those offsetting penalties. As you see, Nigel Dunton leave the field for the final time this regular season. Rich Miller, Dom Catoni. Yes, there is a relation there on our cameras tonight. A good find as we see number three, unfortunately, leaving the field, but a bright future ahead for him at West Bloomfield. Hopefully, we'll get plenty of playoff action going forward. Second time around, the PAT is up. This time it is good. Lakers 28, Oak Park 0. It's Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to Laker Football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. After... Uh... A cornucopia of penalties between both teams on the PAT. Ultimately, the Lakers got a second shot at it. And that time it went through. So now Justin Ward on season 33 for 38 on PATs. Lakers now 28 to 0. Familiar territory from a week ago. They put up 28 in the first half against Southfield AT. And barring anything significant in these final 11 seconds in the first half, that's where it's going to stand likely in this regular season finale against Oak Park. Justin Ward at the Laker 45-yard line, just to the left side of the middle hash. We'll kick this ball off to Oak Park once again. Back for the Knights, Rondre Austin alongside Quinton Blakely. Play is whistled active. Here comes Ward, kicks that ball off, and it is going to bounce to about the 25-yard line, recovered to the 30-yard line, 35, and out of bounds on the recovery for George Butler. Yeah, I mean, really, for a freshman, we've been saying George Butler's name tonight, really showing a lot of promise as a freshman. That's what this is about in Oak Park. That's why I said earlier on, it's not a matter of if, but when this team takes that jump. They're making big plays, they're making smart plays, and you're seeing that talent grow right in front of your eyes. A team that a season ago didn't have a single win, got blown out often this season. Oak Park playing pretty impressive. Put up 14 points on U of D Jesuit. Unfortunately, a blowout loss in week one. But an overtime victory against Troy Athens. Two consecutive wins against Athens and against Troy out of the blue. Kept things close with Avondale. Kept things close with North Farmington. And fought back in the second half after going down 35-0 to last week against Seaholm, a really good team out of the OAA Blue Division, the Blue Division champions in 2023. Likely one final play for the Knights in the first half. Nehemiah Black lined up at the quarterback, twins out to the right, down 28 zip with six seconds. Snap, handoff, Michael Reed takes it. He got an open space at the 45, still fighting at the 50. And gets ultimately down to the 46-yard line as time expires at the end of the first half. Lakers 28, Oak Park 0. It's Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM.
Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Carrie, number nine. My dad and my grandfather are officials. I've grown up around officials and seeing how much they enjoy being part of the games. As a student athlete, I've always appreciated the people out there who are willing to give back to the kids. The Legacy Program lets me officiate while I'm still in high school, working younger kids' games. Officiating gives me a better understanding of the game. I get to make some pretty good money for a high school kid, and I even get to spend some quality time with my dad. There's help wanted. Just whistle. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chavon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game, we never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Ronnie started doing prescription pills at the age of 15, and by 19, he died. If your child is struggling with drug use, try not to be too proud to reach out for help. Don't be worried about what the neighbor will think or your family. Just get your child the help they need. Sometimes it's the hard road to take, but um, the hard road is nothing compared to living with the fact that your child is no longer with you. There's hope and help at drugfree.org. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Follow us on Twitter at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The cheer team out in their football jerseys tonight. Lots to cheer about after the first half from the West Bloomfield Lakers. We'll take a look back at some of our key plays from throughout the first half so far tonight. Early on in the first quarter, we'll get this going. Bomb squad back at work. That friendly connection. Rick Nance tosses this one way down the field. The rainbow on one side and on the other side, it's Elijah Durham. Catching the pot of gold down at the one yard line. That's set up a few plays later, later after some defensive stops. Nigel Dunton off the low snap, pushes forward, gets a great block, gets in for six. That put the Lakers up seven to zero with the PAT. Later on in that first half, a sweep for Marquise Morris. Shifts around those blockers, gets toward the sideline, tons of space in the boundary, and sneaks into the corner with a little bit of shoulder shoving at the end. 14 to zip, Lakers. No, this is not the same play, just a little bit darker. It's the same design and the same guy. The flash through that same corner gets in for a second touchdown on the ground tonight. Lakers 21 to zero. Then here comes Rick Nance rushing up the middle and gets into the end zone for the latest touchdown after a couple of PAT attempts, one with a penalty and the other that ended up through the uprights. Lakers 28 to zero at the half once again and, and Matt last week it was kind of surprising to see the, the Lakers dominate Southfield A&T like they did a week ago tonight not as much of a surprise but you're seeing some really good football from West Bloomfield yeah I mean really the past two weeks a trench play by this football team has been phenomenal it's really been the driving force behind both the offense and defense 
last week you're able to only rush three because of how incredible the defensive front was playing. And now tonight you're seeing them stifling the run game of Oak Park. As we substitute out the cheer team for the Palms team, the Lakers substituting out some of those common mistakes from weeks past to get a little bit too excited, a little bit too passionate, and make some boneheaded errors, some mental errors that force them back and put them in difficult positions. Look, a little bit of that tonight. You had an ejection late in the first half that the coaching staff didn't seem to agree with alongside the officials, but for the most part, the discipline for the Lakers, the execution for the Lakers has been on point tonight. Yeah, we haven't really seen that many penalties from the Lakers tonight. No bad snaps, no drops. Really just a sound game from them, and that's what you wanted to see tonight. And that's really what you needed from them tonight in order to secure a home playoff game. This last game of the season, the regular season, is kind of that dress rehearsal for playoff time. Look, the Lakers are in, but this doesn't mean this game isn't important. Tonight's game impacts where you land in the playoff points. Tonight coming in to week number nine, the Lakers were ranked number seven in Division One. A, a win tonight could put them in a really good spot if, if things go their way across town. The MHSAA playoffs on their way and all of your Laker football action right here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We can't tell you when or where the Lakers will be playing because it's going to be decided on Sunday night. Selection show with our friends over at Bally Sports will be happening on Sunday at 6 o'clock. So go from Lions football to Laker football and see where the L boys will be playing next week. Rest assured, you'll see that game and hear it live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The next best place to look for Laker football in the meantime is on our website on civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports. Plenty more on the Laker Halftime Show coming up at the half. 28 for West Bloomfield and nothing for Oak Park. It's Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Looking for a score, a schedule, a story? MHSAA.com has you covered. Our newly redesigned website has everything you need to follow high school sports in Michigan. And it's optimized for mobile use. Fans can submit scores on a Friday night, check playoff pairings and game times, or read about the student athletes from your community. Your first stop is MHSAA.com. Connect with us online and get everything you need all in one place. Inside your brain is the control center for how you think, talk, learn, and remember. 10 tips to keep it healthy. Get moving. Read a book. Reduce stress. Sleep well. Eat healthy. Quit smoking. Manage your blood pressure. Challenge your mind. Wear a helmet. Stay social. Be mindful of brain health now to help prevent things like dementia later. Learn more at michigan.gov slash mybrainhealth. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keith and Diane Siobhan as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com. Or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Stormwater travels through a vast system of pipes and pumps to move water away from our homes to a water treatment plant and back into the Great Lakes. Our system is not designed to handle rainfall from extreme storms that can lead to freeway flooding and basement backups. Help protect your property and your community by making sure storm drains are clean and avoid using your washing machine so as not to overload the system during a storm. Keep our system fresh and flowing. It's all one water. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. 
Find local municipal meetings at our program schedule on civiccentertv.com. Find when your meetings air live or when they're replaying on our Civic Center TV live stream. Find it all at civiccentertv.com and click schedule at the top of the screen. Welcome back to Laker Football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Tyler Keith alongside Matt Cantoni. Now, you're seeing the Oak Park Marching Band performing at the half in the away stands at West Bluefield High School and really putting on a show. Two yeah. great marching bands we have between our high schools, West Bluefield and Oak Park. And Oak Park, this would have been their senior night at their high school and the game moved to West Bloomfield for logistical purposes. Some unfortunate security incidents at Oak, Oak Park in the last few weeks, including on their homecoming night just a couple weeks back against Ferndale. And so moving things along tonight as we take a look inside also our press booth at West Bloomfield High School. Staff hard at work all season long, doing great work to manage the Experience on site, including Stoney from 97 won the ticket in the foreground that you're seeing. Matt is also the cross country coach here at West Bloomfield High School. Everybody putting in work the spotters, the scoreboard keepers, and of course our team from Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM all throughout the season. I hope that they'll have a long postseason alongside of us as well. We'll have Laker football all throughout the MHSAA Division I playoffs, and so far looking good as we head toward. Week number 10, which is the first week of the postseason. Lakers coming in seventh in the state rankings in Division yeah, One. We'll see where they fall after tonight's ball game of 28 zip on Oak Park. Regardless of where they're placed, where they'll be placed on broadcast is on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Likely next Friday will be the first playoff game. We'll find that out on Sunday. Selection show at six o'clock on Valley Sports, and then we'll have all the details. We'll get right back to work getting that game all arranged for you, possibly, more than likely, with the Lakers being a top 10 team in these playoffs and 16 first round matchups in Division One, gonna have a playoff matchup at home in West Bloomfield and Matt. Big implications tonight all across the MHSAA, the regular season finale, a non-conference matchup between Celine and Lake Orion, the big one, the number four Lake Orion Dragons, who narrowly beat the Lakers 13 to 14 earlier on this season, going up against undefeated Celine coming into this week, both tied up with, with right around 78 playoff points apiece. Yeah, I mean, really, that's a big game for the Lakers in a way, too, where it's if Lake Orion keeps on winning, that makes that loss, you know, not necessarily look as bad. Yeah, big implications from that game as we approach the end of halftime here at West Bloomfield High School. Could elevate the Lakers, could elevate the Belleville Tigers as well up in that top five. And tonight, all the more reason, big, big week uh, here in West Bloomfield. A big week for the Lakers and for Oak Park. If they're able to come back in the second half, four win teams can get into the playoffs, especially when you play a tough schedule in the OAA. You see teams near and just outside the bubble of that top 32 having three wins, such as number 32, Ann Arbor Huron, familiar territory for Cam Flowers, who transferred in from Huron to the Lakers, and even Oxford, just outside looking in, number 33 at three and five with 46 playoff points coming into tonight. All the more reason, look, you might have a six and two team, you might have a three and five team, but playoff implications abundant here at West Bloomfield High School and all across Southeastern Michigan. The Laker Halftime Show continues in just a few minutes on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. You're watching and listening to your home for Greater West Bloomfield News. Civic Center TV and 89.3 WBLD Orchard Link. West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake. 89.3 Lakes FM. So, I got my start in officiating when a friend told me I should try it. At first I just did basketball and I got hooked. Before long I added baseball, softball, football and volleyball. I really enjoy giving back to the game working with kids and working with my local association to recruit and train new officials. I would like to say to anybody that officiating is a great way to help kids and stay connected to the game. We always need new officials. There's help wanted, just listen. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry. 
sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV, and 89.3 Lakes FM. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to Laker Football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Just approaching the beginning of the third period here at West Bloomfield High School. Again, the Lakers putting up 28 points in the first half. An electric performance offensively and a stout performance on the defensive side as you see the Lakers warming up for what's a cool night in West Bloomfield, their final game of the regular season. Then the playoffs coming around next week. The Lakers will find out who they're going up against likely here at West Bloomfield High School. You see Oak Park getting back on the field in the background on your screens. Playoff football beginning next week. We'll have all your playoff coverage for you right here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Lakers still got 24 minutes of football. Got to take care of business still tonight and ultimately finish this ball game. Four scores. They were able to take care of that in the first half. But if you're able to do it in the first half, that means your opponent can do it in the second half. What do you want to see from the Lakers as they continue on these last 24 minutes of the regular season? I mean, I really want to see them keep their foot on the gas, keep things going not really let up like they did kind of last week, and that's going to be important. Yeah, got to get those key guys involved, and two of them getting each other ready for that second half right there. Brandon Davis swing, getting stretched out by Xavier Davis. Two guys that had a really nice first half, especially Xavier Davis. Yeah, I mean, really, the run game tonight, yeah, Oak Park has had a few runs ripped off. Really, that's more of a testament to their running backs, but really there hasn't been much available in this front seven. Yeah, really tough to go up against this Lakers front. That defensive line, Look, had a couple of stars coming into the season. Superstar Brandon Davis Swain, a four-star guy going to Colorado to play for Coach Prime. Next fall, Jonathan Gabriel, a very, very good, an underrated defensive lineman on the opposite edge. And then the interior, Xavier Davis, who this team really loves as a leader in the interior, a guy that they expected to maybe even play a little bit of offensive line throughout the season. And an emerging star in Kamari Pittman, who's been a big force in that first half, also getting to the court quarterback getting to rushers and you know, playing physical in the trenches yeah I mean really that physicality has been something that has really stood out these past few weeks as a, for the Lakers as we get ready for the playoffs and really that, that's going to be something key in the playoffs because really the biggest thing is delivering a big punch to start off those playoff games. Yeah, this Oak Park team is young but they're smart high IQ football players they've been playing really well in this first half and they're super athletic all the more credit to that laker defensive front who's been able to use their size to their advantage and that second level guys those safeties also at the third level playing great support for the lakers but you can't say enough about that offense that, uh, for, for west bloomfield they've been on fire and look the first several weeks of the season they put up a lot of their points in the air they've been making their buck on the ground these last few weeks including two touchdowns tonight on the ground for marquise morris that's the big news over the last few weeks we got the big news from all throughout town every single day during your work week on the splash live monday through friday with diane shabon and i beginning at 8 30 a.m on civic center tv and 89.3 lakes fm give you the latest news and updates from across the community give you a preview of some upcoming events like the west bloomfield parks veterans Memorial breakfast that will be happening, Veterans Day celebration coming up in just a few weeks on Election Day at West Bloomfield Middle School. And talk to some newsmakers about things going on right here in our community. Recently talked to Nick O'Shea, an assistant coach on this Lakers football team who's 
company, Extra Point Solutions, supporting name, image, and likeness business for Samaj Morgan, a Laker legend in his own right, Trey Mosley, the all-time leading Lakers receiver, both for touchdowns and yards, as well as cheerleader Peyton Harvey. That happening for the big game tomorrow between Michigan and Michigan State at West Bloomfield Middle School. You can still get your tickets now by looking at the West Bloomfield School District's Facebook page. We're broadcasting tonight, facebook.com slash West Bloomfield Schools. A discount if you put in the promo code Lakers on ExtraPointSolutions.com. Taking a look at head coach Zach Hilbers, a fantastic job he's been doing in his first season at the helm, a former quarterback at West Bloomfield High School, a longtime assistant, and you know, these players taking advantage of their opportunities. He's making the most of his opportunity at the helm after 17 years as an assistant. Yeah, really, I think the best thing that he's done is really holding true to what he said his goal was at the beginning of the year, not really coming out, setting a tone, and really changing the culture and really making it about himself, but really, you know, doing what they expect from the up-and-coming players, keeping it going, keeping the culture the same, and really just not making it about yourself, making it about the program. And that's indicative of both of these teams on the field. Zach Hilbers, a longtime assistant under Coach Grice, under Coach Ron Bellamy, who built this program, and this team for Oak Park, this coaching staff, under the tutelage of Greg Carter, a former champion in Division 7 in 2001 and Division 8 in 2002 at Detroit Martin St. Depor, uh, sorry, Detroit St. Martin DePores, and a, a guy that's had a ton of success at Oak Park High School. Nine straight playoff appearances before the last two seasons, just missing the playoffs and on the verge of playoff time this season with three wins. Got to chase back the Lakers tonight in order to make that happen for the Lakers trying to play spoiler for Oak Park and really bounce themselves high into those MHSAA Division I playoff rankings. And they can do it. Like Orion taking on number five, Celine. It's a four versus five matchup. Davison taking on Lapierre. That's a number three versus number 22 matchup. Then another big matchup all across town two happening with Northville, number two in Division I taking on Belleville in the KLAA championship game. So a lot of these top teams in the top 10 going to take losses tonight. There's going to be a lot of movement in that top 10. All the more reason Lakers got to take care of business in the second half, even though they got a 28 to 0 lead with 24 minutes to play in this ball game. 24 minutes on the clock, 12 in this third quarter as Oak Park after receiving the initial kickoff We'll kick this one off to West Bloomfield to begin half number two. Quinton Blakely, the running back and kicker for Oak Park, will kick it off in the middle hash at the 40-yard line. Squib kick, going to land inside the 20, picked up at the 20-yard line, out to the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, still on his feet at the 40, pushing toward the 45. Flowers Cam the Flowers goes down to the 43-yard line. Yeah, really one of the rare opportunities that a returner has been given the opportunity to do so for the Lakers this year. And Cam Flowers showing exactly why teams have been show, or so hesitant to kick the ball off to the Lakers. He's got a big weekend ahead of him, too, heading to my favorite place on planet Earth, East Lansing, Michigan, Spartan Stadium for the big game tomorrow. We'll be visiting Harlan Barnett's Michigan State Spartans for the big game on Saturday between number two Michigan and uh, very much unranked Michigan State. 11.54 to go in the third quarter here at West Bloomfield as we begin the second half. Nance takes a snap, screen pass out to his right side of the 40, caught, advancing up to the 50-yard line and slammed to the ground. Elijah Durham gets several yards on first down, gets to the 50. Yeah, really just a good play to come out of the half, get things going, good throw off the play fake right there for Nance. And just Durham picks up the yard that's available for him, spins off the tackle, and keeps things going. Yeah, good blocks out in the boundary, too, by Marquise Morris and Jaden Allo sets up a second down and four for West Bloomfield. Second and three for the Lakers at the 50 on the right hash. Two split out to the left. Now it's handoff. Josh Tate up the gut. Gets to the line to gain. Right about there. They're going to mark him a yard short. Had a little bit of a push, and Oak Park got that second effort and forced 13 back. Yeah, a gap opened up just for a split second, but it closed just as fast. Luckily, Tate's able to pick up the, just the one or two yards that were available for him until his forward progress was stopped. Yeah, Damaris Harvey, the senior among the tacklers, making that second effort to prevent that first down and bring up second down and one for West Bloomfield off the run from Tate. 
Tate will be in the backfield alongside Rick Nance. Khalid Muhammad also there as a second running back. Just behind the tight end, Brandon Davis Swain on the quarterback's left side. Huddle in motion, snap, handoff, gonna go to Tate, and he's gonna get tripped up and stopped at the 50-yard line, loss of two on second down. Yeah, really good, good job right there from the Oak Park defense and really their linebackers getting back there almost immediately. And now, Lakers are set up with a short yardage situation here on fourth down, and it looks like they're gonna be going for it. Now that is the case, some substitutions. Jaden Allos comes in for Khalid Muhammad, Caleb Caudle rushing toward the sideline, and Oak Park, Loading up the box on fourth down. Three men in the backfield. Snap to Nance. Hands off to Marquise Morris. Jet sweep out to the right side. Going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage, and Oak Park will take over. Yeah, really going to one of their more reliable play options right here, and one of their most reliable players on the season in Morris. Unfortunately, unable to get things going as Oak Park is able to just keep on stretching out and stretching out the field right there and not giving Morris a chance to take it upfield. And now Oak Park can have their best starting field position of the night. Dead center at midfield. And actually, they'll push them just a little bit back into their own territory. They'll begin at the 49-yard line, and so does Mother Nature beginning her impact tonight. The rain now coming in at West Bloomfield High School. Not unfamiliar to the Lakers or the Knights, both having played in rain over the last three weeks. Oak Park picking up a loss last week at Seahome, a win. Uh, with an early finish on their homecoming night against Ferndale the week before, and then a 6-9 to nine loss at North Farmington over the past three weeks. The Lakers with wins against Southfield a and in Oxford and loss against Clarkston, bringing them into tonight for the regular season finale. First down and 10 at the 49-yard line on their side of the field is Oak Park with Nehemiah Black in at quarterback. Two split out to the left, snap. Handoff, Blakely shifts outside, goes back inside, gets up to the 50-yard line, gonna get two and a half yards with Tank Pittman taking him down. Yeah, really a good run right there for considering what was available to him. But again, Blakely just really shining through as a bright spot for this Oak Park offense. His vision right there, tremendous, pick up even some yardage. Yeah, counters off to his left side and then shifts back into his right as the hole opens up, getting what he can from a very stingy front for the Lakers in this base 4-3 defense. Eight yards to go for the first down. Another two running back set. Snap and a handoff to Guyton. He'll get up about maybe one, maybe two yards to set up third. Yeah, and really this is how Oak Park has really tried to set themselves up the entire day. It's just get themselves in these third and short situations that allows themselves to continue running the ball. It just kind of careens into Xavier Davis at the termination of that play. And it's not so much that they have to switch up their quarterbacks. They're trying to get the right athletes in the right spots for Greg Carter and company. See Nehemiah Black again going to be taking the snap. Got two in the backfield with him. Ivan Burrow, the freshman alongside another freshman, sorry, uh, sophomore, Michael Reed. Snap, handoff, Burrow gonna get outside, pushing toward the line to gain, and then the Lakers pull him back. What an effort by that defensive line. An initial push almost gets him the gainer, and the Lakers come in and they just rip him right backwards. Look at this, gets a push from the line, then the supports come in. Second effort, Blake Simmons is in on that for West Bloomfield. Noah Harrison in the Laker 33, the senior, also in on that. That brings up fourth and one. Yeah, really just Burrow has been impressive tonight, running with really intensity and physicality, really offering a good blend with Blakely, you know, thunder and lightning, but the Lakers are able to stop him right there. This game gonna have big impact on the top of division one with big games all across town. Lake Orion just taking the lead over Celine across town. Fourth down for Oak Park. Snap, handoff, pushing up the gut. Lakers match them. Are they going to get there? Looks like they do. Just barely past the line to gain. First down for Oak Park. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Right now, based on the linesman, it looks like he's going to have that. I'd be interested to see if they even bring Oak out the Park. sticks. Okay, yeah, they signal that's a first down. They're not going to bring out the sticks. Moving the chains. That toughness on display for Oak Park. No give in this night's offense. They keep playing their style of football. 
win or lose, you're going to stick to that. You're building this program, this team, chock full of sophomores and freshmen, and even some juniors that are going to have a big senior season ahead. And they want to get some points on the board tonight in West Bloomfield. First down and 10 at the 40-yard line. Snap, handoff, outside the tackles, up to the 32-yard line. And finally, Michael Reed Michael goes Reed down with a big there. effort as he rolls outside the tackles to the boundary. Yeah, I mean, really, Tyler, we've been speaking on just the youth of this Oak Park team. It's going to be really interesting to see where they end up in a year and especially two years from now. And they're really one of the more experienced teams in the OAA. I don't, you know, not trying to sound redundant, but this reminds me a lot of Southfield A&T over the last few years. A team that had tons of talent, really well coached under Aaron Marshall and in the late era of Tim Conley. It's a matter of when everybody hits their stride. They're building something in Oak Park. The Knights will be back sooner rather than later. Second down and short, snap, handoff, Reed, pushing forward, looks like he got it again. He breaks free inside the 20, and a big break for Michael Reed, sets up a first down in the red zone. Yeah, really the eldest of all the running backs that we've been seeing tonight from Oak Park, and he really just shows that veteran prowess right there, not giving up on the play, keeping the legs churning, and picks up a nice first down right there. That's what you teach your running backs. You meet that point of attack and you're not getting anywhere. You keep those legs chopping because if something breaks in your favor, all of a sudden you go from picking up two, three, four yards to getting 10 to 15. That's what happened. First down and 10 for the first time in the red zone tonight. Oak Park at the Lakers 19 yard line. Two running backs set again. Nehemiah Black will take the snap with Burrow and Reed in the backfield. One split out to the short side, snap, handoff, Reed, pushing forward and gets inside the 15, down near the 10. They're gonna mark him about the 11 yard line on second down. Yeah, really an impressive drive for Oak Park right now, really just sticking with this running game despite the score of the game. But you're starting to see some more creases open up and then start to rip off more of these lengthy runs. And yeah, not for a heads up dive to trip up the running back. Michael Reed may have had a touchdown. They've got a great hole on first down setting up second down in about three. 440 to go in the third quarter. Lakers 28, Oak Park zero. Regular season finale for both of these teams. Nehemiah Black will stay in at quarterback. Guyton out wide to the left. Snap, handoff. This time we'll go to Burrow. Gets outside the tackle, shifts inside, gets hit, but gets the first down. Yeah, I mean, Burrow almost kind of taking himself down right there, just trying to anticipate the contact first and almost down, diving. Oak Park. In into Mc or Mackay Harris and he, uh, just uh, ultimately picking up the first down on the last. Yeah, Harris kind of just finishing him off as Wade got tripped up, tripped up trying to put that shoulder down and Harris just kind of give him a couple taps on the shoulder pads and send him to the ground. Nonetheless, it's gonna move the chains, a first down and goal for Oak Park at the Lakers seven yard line. Black, handoff, Burrow, outside the tackles again. Lakers read that out, don't let him get much. Gets up to the five yard line for second and goal. Yeah, but really, the only trouble is, yeah, you're getting the run game going. That's all they've been able to do, and they are eating up a ton of time off the clock at this point, being down four possessions. Second down and goal at the five yard line, really the five and a half yard line just before that five yard line on the left hash. 315 and ticking to go in the third quarter. Lakers up 28th zip. Same formation. One split out to the short side, one out to the wide side. One running back. It's Michael Reed. Pushes forward at the three. Down to the two. Down to the one. Is he in? Oak Park says he is. No indication from the referees just yet. It looks like he's going to be down at the one-yard line, but another big effort from Michael Reed. Take a look. Yeah, I mean, really, again, just another physical run. He gets the initial contact at about the four-and-a-half-yard line, but he keeps the legs moving, and he gets that ball to about the inch, inch mark, really, to where now this Lakers defense is going to have to step up huge on these next two plays. Appreciative tonight, Chanel Kasab Konya on, on the West Bloomfield School District Facebook page. An important matchup for her, school where, where, district where she lives, the school district where she grew up as Ivan Burrow gets into the end zone for Oak Park. They'll get on the board for the first time tonight. I mean, really capping off 
what was a physical drive right there from Oak Park, just running it up the gut consistently again and again and again. And then it ends with uh, Burrow tunneling his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Oak Park. First time tonight to get on the board. They're going to go for two. That's something they did a lot over the last few weeks. Very rarely will they kick the extra point. 28 to 6 with 238 to go in the third. Two running back set, snap, handoff. Reed gonna take it again, pushes forward, almost there, and he gets set back. Blake Simmons gets in on the attack. So does Brandon Davis Swain, and it'll stay 28 for West Bloomfield, six for Oak Park. We take a look at that again. Everybody getting involved, wrapping up the running back and taking him down. Yeah, really, Reed having a fantastic drive, that scoring drive for Oak Park. Right there, the Lakers defense says, no, not this time. You're not getting these two points, and they stuff them right in there, right before the, or on the extra point. That is an A-plus effort for the Lakers special teams front, defensive front, really, at that point, with the Knights going for two. To get in on that, to put full forth full effort. I don't care if you're up 28 points or you're up two points. Everybody's got to play 48 minutes of football this time of the year if you're going to win football games. That's why Zach Hilbers looking content on the sidelines as the Lakers got plenty of football left to play. Up 28 to six with 2.38 to go in the third quarter of this final regular season game. Playoff football ahead for West Bloomfield. The MHSAA playoff selection show for division one coming up on Sunday at six o'clock from our friends at Valley Sports Detroit. That'll determine where the Lakers go next week or better yet, who they're gonna play against next week. Likely gonna be a home playoff game at least once, maybe even twice for the Lakers in Division I. We'll find that out on Sunday and then we'll have the broadcast for you next week, likely on Friday here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Yeah, it looks like the it must be windy or kind of slippery down there as uh, they're holding the ball on the it tee. Is. Yeah, we saw earlier the wind coming in, the rain coming in at West Bloomfield High School near the end of the third quarter. That also perhaps playing a factor in Oak Park continuing to just be content to run the football, but a great drive for Michael Reed on the running game, Ivan Burrow, and this Oak Park offense making it 28 to 6. Kickoff, it's a squib, gonna land about the 35-yard line, recovered by West Bloomfield, to push up to the 40-yard line, the 41, maybe the 42, nope. They'll stay right there at the 41, nonetheless. Great field position for the Lakers as Brody Pecor, the linebacker, the up man, picks up the football with 226 to play in third. Yeah, really, I mean, there's not, you know, although he's not a returner, Brody Pecor is very familiar with carrying the ball. Does a good job of, you know, securing the ball right there and picking up what yards he can to set the offense in good position. Running back, a fullback, a former quarterback, and a tight end is Brody Pecor. You see plenty of newsmakers like Brody Pecor all across the community, Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m., all the way through your mornings, and replaying on the Splash Live, your stories from your hometown on your community media. First down and 10 for the Lakers at the 41-yard line. Nance, shotgun snap, quick pass. It is caught at the 44-yard line. A gain of a couple of yards on first down as he slings that ball out to Jaden Adams. Yeah, really just trying to get something quick and easy, get the offense and rhythm on first down. Fortunately, you know, nothing really there. Oak Park really on that play right there to stuff him and keep it a second and long situation. And Jaden Allos, well over 10 targets now this season in double digits last year, just got three targets the entire season for 16 yards. And one of those went for 12 yards. So a lot more action in 2023, making a big impact for the Lakers. Second down, Nance, quarterback draw up the middle, 45 down to the 47-yard line will make this a third and manageable. Yeah, we really saw the Lakers have a lot of success through Rick Nance on the ground in the first half. Right there, not necessarily as much success as they had in the first half, but a good run to set them up or themselves up in a really manageable third down situation right here. Win tonight would be big for the Lakers. Lagorian currently in, in the second quarter, down 14 to 10 at Celine in that number four versus number five matchup in Division One. Lakers 28 to six with a buck 18 and ticking to go on the third. Twins to the left for the Lakers. Nance snaps and rolls out to the left side, looking toward the sideline, passed and just out of the hands of Jaden Allos as you see Mother Nature playing a factor, slippery ball at the sideline. 
it really just another one of those plays where they're trying to keep it, you know, simple throw and catch situation. Get it to him on the sideline. You can step out of bounds. You keep the sticks moving and you can get back to trying to take time off the clock. Now we're likely to see them punt the ball right here and give the ball back to Oak Park. Yeah, fourth down. So Jaden Allos couldn't pull that ball in, but he's going to come out for the punt, and he has been fantastic in the punting game for the Lakers. Their school record average for a season is 45 yards, and Allos 17 punts this season for a total of 582 yards. That is averaging a tie of that record. Here's his chance, punts this ball off. A line drive lands about the 30 yard line, takes a Laker bounce toward the 20. Now an Oak Park bounce, only right, right back to about the 21 yard line. That's where that ball will stop and Oak Park will begin another offensive drive. And the Lakers, look that defensive front has been strong all game long. It wasn't for a lack of effort that Oak Park was able to run that football into the end zone last drive. Yeah, I mean, really, it's going to be interesting, though, to see if they take a similar approach this drive. That last drive taking, I believe, it was seven and a half minutes to get in the end zone. Don't have that luxury right here with the, with the way that the score is and how much time's left on the clock. Yeah, you went for two and didn't get those two points, so a lot more ground even to cover. Now down an extra point, 28 to six to score with 48 seconds to go in the third quarter at West Bloomfield High School. Oak Park coming back out on the field with their three wins on the season. Looking to come back in this game with 12 minutes and 48 seconds left to play in this one. Mother Nature's got other plans. Wind and rain. After some great photography from Dom Catoni and Rich Miller. Snap and a handoff is going to go to Quentin Blake Blakely. Ball, He'll yeah. get a few, just about five yards on first down. Yeah, I mean, really, with how Burrow and Reed ran the ball last drive, they were able to give Blakely a bit of a rest. And it's going to be interesting now to see if they really Double unleash him as they need a quick score right here. Lakers taking care of business so far tonight, 28 to 6. Shutting down the passing game for Oak Park. Oak Park, in vast majority, attempting to run the football on this Friday night, the final regular season game with 30 seconds left in the third. West Bloomfield 28, Oak Park 6. One man in motion is Rondre Austin. They'll hand the ball off, and West Bloomfield will jump right on top of that. On the push that ball back. A couple push-ups after the play for Xavier Davis as Oak Park gets set back. I mean, really, I think this is why we're seeing them start up for these quick handoffs as you're seeing a lot of struggle when they try and shake things up. That will signal the end of the third quarter. West Bloomfield 28, Oak Park 6. It's that Laker football on Civic Center quarter. TV and 89.3 Lakes at that. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Siobhan as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Twelve more minutes remaining in this regular season at West Bloomfield High School. West Bloomfield 28, Oak Park 6 on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Our coverage of Laker football continues all throughout the postseason. MHSAA Division I playoffs beginning next week Friday. Lakers will find out where they'll begin that playoff effort on Sunday evening. Six o'clock is the MHSAA playoff selection show. Live broadcast on our friends at Valley Sports Detroit. As you see, this Lakers coaching staff getting ready to wrap up the regular season with some high-quality football. Oak Park in the middle of another offensive drive. Beginning in their own territory this time around, as opposed to the friendly territory they had last drive. Nehemiah Black back in at quarterback in the Oak Park number two. Single man in the backfield to his right is Quinton Blakely. And one split out wide to the right. Andre Austin in motion, takes the handoff, getting chased by Hayes outside to the 25-yard line. 
and gets a couple yards on first down as he rolls out of bounds. Yeah, really just nothing there. You see him, Rondre Austin, just really keep on trying to stretch that run out, waiting for Crease to open. But the Lakers do a good job of just really holding their own on that play and not letting up and giving a crease for him to rip one off. Yeah, Rondre Austin, one of the many All-State oh, track stars oh. on this team, a speedy Oak Park team. All-State for Oak Park in the 4x100, 4x200, and 4x400 relay last spring. 11.49 to go in this ball game at West Bloomfield High School. Lakers 28, Oak Park 6. As we approach the end of the regular season. Two men in the backfield alongside the quarterback, Nehemiah Black. Hand off to Burrow and stuffed in the backfield. Ivan Burrow. Ivan Burrow not going to get anything there. Xavier Davis celebrating that big tackle once again alongside Jonathan Voorhees. I mean, really just a, a huge thing right there for the Lakers to step up. This will really quell any hope to come back right here for Oak Park. And Best really game of the season huge. for Xavier Davis all season long, getting in, involved in the interior. Now going to take a break on the sideline as both these teams shift back out on the field. On this early night at West Bloomfield High School, this game kicking off early tonight, 6 o'clock. We're in the final 12 minutes of football. First down for the Lakers. Nance takes the snap. Got a good pocket. Looking down the field. Got an open man. Durham. Oh, just outside his reach by maybe six inches, or that would have been six. Yeah, really going for the dagger right there. But unfortunately, just not able to dial it up right outside of Durham's reach. And now the Lakers will be set up with a second and more. Yeah, just a little bit of extra sauce on that one from Rick Nance to his favorite target, Elijah Durham. A little bit of a drought over the last few weeks for that pair who otherwise have connected eight times for touchdowns this season. The single season record for touchdowns is 10. Nance with Benjamin in motion. Jameer Benjamin, the UCLA commit. On the ground, on a road trip down inside the five. Again, a big run for Jameer, Jameer Benjamin, Benjamin who had a really nice performance a week ago against Southfield a and on the ground where he had couple of attempts last week and tonight getting a big gainer for West Bloomfield. Last week, one rush for 60 yards and gets a ton on first down. Yeah, really, last week we saw them start to go to, to Jameer Benjamin in the second half of a crucial game. And really, that goes back to what Coach Hilbert said at the beginning of the year. We're going to get the ball to our, good, our best players when we need them to. First down and goal for the Lakers at the five-yard line. Nance takes the snap, hands it off. Brandon Davis Swain breaks free, gets back to the li Davis line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Yeah, really, unfortunately, nothing really there. Oak Park really sniffing out the play design on that. They break through, and the Punisher just can't sneak away right there. Yeah, they send a couple at him. The lead tackler at the end of that play is Kerry Farrer, the senior, and ultimately, Going to set the Lakers back one yard. They'll mark that ball instead at the six-yard line in second and goal. Similar formation for the Lakers. Rick Nance lined up in the shotgun. Brandon Davis Swain just ahead of him, the fullback, and Khalid Muhammad split short out to the right side in the slot. In motion, Khalid Muhammad, the quarterback draw. Now shifts inside, pushing, pushing and reaching, and just missing the end zone. Down at the one yard line with the reach. Touchdown, Lakers. Now you hear Stoney in the background. They're going to give it to the quarterback. Another touchdown, his second rushing touchdown of the night. Yeah, really, probably the best rushing performance for him this season. And just a great job right there, keeping the legs moving. And at the end, reaching the ball over to get it in. And just a phenomenal run right there for Nance. So you can see right there, yep, just yeah. barely reaching the ball over that white line. It's a beautiful reach by Rick Nance to get into the end zone on the rushing touchdown. For the quarterback, that will be his third rushing touchdown on the season. That last second reach, just enough, right before that knee hit the ground. Puts the Lakers up 34-6, to six, and he's going to stay on the field. Lakers going for two. Got to get those extra points. Positioning so important. Nance not liking what he's seeing, possibly running out of time, calls a timeout. And so we'll take a couple moments to let you know that Laker football continues all throughout the postseason on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM, the MHSAA playoffs. 
Going to be determined following all of tonight's action. The Lakers on the other, earlier side, the other games now well underway. That's going to determine where things go from here. The MHSAA playoffs kicking off a week from tonight. Likely going to see the Lakers back here at the Swamp on Friday next week. Who will they be playing? Stay tuned to Bally Sports over the weekend and us all throughout next week on civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports. We'll have all of the Lakers playoff football games home and away on your home for Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Big games all across town having implications on tonight's game. 21 to 10 in favor of Celine against the Lake Orion Dragons with about 40 seconds left in the first half down river. That could have a big impact on the Lakers. That's why they're going for two, get those extra playoff points. Nance takes the snap, sweep, hands it off. It looks like Durham is gonna run that ball in. It's Khalid Muhammad, gets in for two, makes it 36 for West Bloomfield, and six for Oak Park. It's Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Yeah, Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chavon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The Lakers defending the anchor at the Swamp, an extra home football game with this being shifted over to West Bloomfield in the final week of the regular season. And after the touchdown for Rick Nance, his second on the night, his third rushing touchdown on the season, plus a two-point conversion from Khalid Muhammad. Lakers 36, Oak Park 6. Justin Ward will kick this ball off just Justin left Ward, of the off. middle hash at the 40-yard line with 10-21 to play in the regular season. This one, a squib kick up the left side, over the head and recovered. West Bloomfield chasing him, mouse in the house, and it's in the West Bloomfield's mouse trap. Jonathan Gabriel picking that ball up, and West Bloomfield going to run this one back on offense. Yeah, that ball just barely skipping over uh, number 13, Alex Patterson's head right there. And West Bloomfield fortunately able to fall on it. Gabriel, as you can tell right there, always some seemingly in the right position, makes the play right there. Eyes up, focus down the field and chase after that football. You get a lucky break, you gotta take advantage. That's exactly what happened. That ball just took a big bounce right over the head of Alex Patterson, the freshman. And Jonathan Gabriel kept his eyes on it, not trying to do anything fancy and get those extra yards. Just dive on top of the football, let your offense do the rest. That's what's going to happen. First down at the 24-yard line of Oak Park. And now we see the second string come in, Jamal Shakespeare, the sophomore quarterback in for the Lakers. Shakespeare takes it himself, quarterback draw up the gut, gets inside the 20 and down to the 16. Yeah, and I mean, right there, you see the run game that Nance has been able to have tonight extending to the backup Jamal Shakespeare right there. Rips off a good run right there on first down to put themselves in good position here. Been a few weeks since we saw the sophomore quarterback with a bright future ahead. Just 14 rushing yards on the season and gets almost half of that and more back on that one single play. Pick up of eight on the play. 9.40 to go in this ball game. Second and short with a Laker 36 to six lead in the fourth quarter at West Bloomfield High School. Jamal Shakespeare, who helped to lead that late game comeback in, Lake, in uh, Clarkston a few weeks ago that came up short, takes the snap on second down, takes it himself, gets the first down to the 15, shifts out to the 12-yard line and shoved out of bounds, but moves the chains. Yeah, again, really just another good run right there for Shakespeare, showing his athleticism, making a few guys miss right there in the hole, just right there, good run miss. 
and still not going down even as he's dropped out of bounds. Remember that name, Jamal Shakespeare, prep red zone describing the young quarterback as having a game that's played with grace and fluidity, calm, collected, and pinpoint quarterback of the future. Hands it off to Cam Flowers, the running back of the present. Inside the 10, inside the 5, pushing forward and gets in. Touchdown, WB. Oh, and, and again, just a, another physical run from Wes Bloomfield right there. Flowers refusing to go down at first, second, and even third contact. Just a tremendous run right there from the running back slash wide receiver. The number one running back for this Lakers offense this season, his seventh rushing touchdown on the year. And he fought for that one for every single yard, as you see him now limping off the field. A lot of contact there. Doesn't seem to be any sort of a major injury. Just he fought for that one. Going to take a rest, stretch that one out on this cold night in West Bloomfield. Meanwhile, Jamal Shakespeare, the sophomore quarterback, will go back out there for two points. Snap, handoff, running to the outside, shifting inside, and just short of the end zone on the two-point conversion attempt is Lyle Massey, so it will stay 42 for West Bloomfield and six for Oak Park as you take a look at Cam Flowers, nicknamed Ferrari, and man, has he got some speed on him, been fantastic for the Lakers. Season long. Yeah, I mean, really, right there, it was incredible just to see the acceleration, really, just him refusing to go down. Just, I mean, really, it could, speaks to just how fast he's going, pinballing at someone full speed and just bouncing right off of them and not going down. Makes it stand at 42 to 6. A lot of Lakers making headlines tonight, and plenty of people making headlines all week long, every week, Monday through Friday, beginning at 8 30 a.m. on the Splash Live. Join Diane Shabon and I. For the latest news and information that you need to know directly from your hometown, West Bloomfield Township and the Tri-Cities, Kiko Harbor, Sylvan Lake, and Orchard Lake Village, among what we talked about today. Shredding Day in West Bloomfield and for the four communities coming up on Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon at West Bloomfield Town Hall. Find more information on the Splash Live on demand on civiccentertv.com. Correction, the... Eight minutes, 54 seconds to play in this ball game. West Bloomfield running away with it, 42 to six on the OAA Blue Division's Oak Park Knights. Rondre Austin and Quinton Blakely back to receive this kickoff for the Oak Park Knights. Another squib kick in the land of the 35 yard line. Bounce to be recovered by Patterson up to the 35 to 40, still fighting on his feet and ultimately slammed down at the sideline at the 40 yard line. Yeah, really a good return right there from Butler. Does a good job of getting the yardage necessary. Looked like he almost nearly fumbled as he went out of bounds. And now there's, as you hear from Stoney, a flag on the play as well. Yeah, perhaps a little bit of extra action. He was near the sideline. Maybe he stepped out and got thrown after that play. Who knows? We'll see what the penalty is, but nonetheless, Lakers going to have a little bit tougher field position defensively to start off this drive with the ball going to be placed around the 40 yard line. Take a look at the official call from the referees. Pit ball, personal foul on the defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. They'll move Oak Park forward into plus territory off the unsportsmanlike conduct call instead of beginning this drive. At the 40-yard line, they'll begin this drive at the Lakers' 45-yard line in plus territory. Plenty more football coming up all season long. The offseason on its way to postseason. On its way, MHSAA playoffs beginning next week, Friday. We'll have your full coverage all postseason on Civic Center TV. Stay with us on civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports as you are tonight. You can also watch all these games on the Facebook page of the West Bloomfield School District at West Bloomfield Schools, on our Facebook page at Civic Center TV 15. And always listen live on 89.3 Lakes FM. First down, snap and a handoff to Burrow. Met after about maybe a uh, one-yard gain. Definitely going to get back to the line of scrimmage. They won't give him anything on first down. So that's up second down and 10 with the rain continuing to come in and the wind playing a big role also. Yeah, I mean, with the running clock going, now we're really going to see this game really pick up now, but I'm sure we probably weren't going to see many clock stoppages either way with how Oak Park's been running the ball. Running clock, the Lakers up 36 points. The mercy rule in effect, only a timeout, an injury, or otherwise other stoppages of play will stop this clock. 
Second down, snap and a handoff. Michael Reed escapes, gets outside, pushes inside, pushes forward to the 35-yard line and even more, but the ball's loose. It's going back to WB. I mean, really just running physical right there for Reed. Stiff-arming defenders, really breaking tackles, but ultimately, too concerned with breaking tackles, not worried enough about ball security. That ball falls out, and now it's Lakers ball again. Yeah, I mean, really, just look at that right there. Just what you preach in tackling in those situations, getting either a hand or a helmet on the football, and just a phenomenal play right there from the Lakers defense. And this, these guys down the depth chart, you're seeing Josh Tillman, the senior, a linebacker and a safety for West Bloomfield. Making the most of his opportunities, coming up with the football and sets up his team really well. Going to begin this drive at their 30-yard line. Jamal Shakespeare back in at quarterback. Two split out to the right in the boundary. Snap, handoff to Massey. Up the gut to the 35-yard line, up to the 36, and a nice run on first down. Yeah, and really, this is all I really expect we'll see right here from the Lakers, just handing the ball off or just more from what we saw from Shakespeare last drive, him taking the ball himself. The senior running back getting some action down the depth chart for West Bloomfield with all these different athletes. Tough to get that game action. We got a player down on the field for Oak Park, so we'll take a brief break here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Follow us on Twitter at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Watch West Bloomfield Lakers football all season long on 89.3 Lakes FM and Civic Center TV. Join Tyler Keith and Matt Catoni each week for live, in-depth, and exclusive coverage before, during, and after the big game. It's your local high school football team on the road and in your backyard on your home for West Bloomfield Laker football, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Look behind the camera. Dom Catoni and Rich Miller, our camera operators, got the best seat in the house at West Bloomfield High School. Top the gridiron as we had an injured player down for Oak Park. That is still the case. They're attending to him. Amy Frazier, the trainer for West Bloomfield High School, as well as Oak Park's training staff out on the fields. We have a stoppage of play here. I want to remind you, we've got plenty of original programming beyond Laker football all day, every day, including the Splash Live Monday through Friday on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Diane Chabon and I bring the latest news from the four communities. Your direct news from your hometown right away as you begin your morning every day and go throughout your work week. You don't have to wait around for the latest stories from your hometown. It's your stories from your hometown on your community media, Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM as you hear some claps in the background for the Oak Park player injured on the field now making his way to the sideline. We'll continue this game with a running clock that did stop because of the injury. It will continue now as they whistle this ball active in just a moment with six minutes and 38 seconds and ticking to go in this ball game. Jamal Shakespeare back in at quarterback for West Bloomfield with Massey in the backfield on first down. Snap, handoff, Massey again up the gut, pushing forward to the 40-yard line, still on his feet. And Kerplunk's into the offensive line for a stop engine. Short gainer. Yeah, really a good job right there from the offensive line and really Massey for just sticking with the offensive line because that's really all his job is to do right now. Just keep a hold of the football, don't fumble, and just keep the clock moving. Halfway through this fourth period, Lakers 42, Oak Park 6 with six minutes to play. Shakespeare with two men in the backfield, snap, hand off to Massey, skips outside, gets met, brought back, and ultimately pulled down. The tackler is Donovan Evans. Yeah, really a physical run right there for Massey. Massey Keeping it going, really getting held by his jersey for a few yards as he just tried to keep the run going for as long as possible, ultimately brought down by a few Oak Park Knights. 
Yeah, physical player, got some size to him too. Six foot 175 senior for West Bloomfield. Let's take a look at the offensive lineman, the second string, also making some big plays, opening up some holes and assisting their running backs. Two men in the backfield again for the Lakers. Snap, a handoff to Massey, and he's going to get stuffed again. Grabbed, pulled, and thrown to the ground. Donovan Edward, Donovan Evans on the tackle for Oak Park. Yeah, really, Donovan Evans has been flashing these past few plays. Really just really making a good job of just establishing a name for himself here these last few plays. It'll allow him to build momentum going into next season. Yeah, the junior got to have one more year at Oak Park coming up and this defensive line making the most of their opportunities late in this game. Still plenty to learn and they got a bright future ahead in Oak Park. They have one of the best head coaches in the entire state of Michigan and Greg Carter. A guy who's built this program once and he's doing it again. Four and a half to play in this ball game. West Bloomfield got the football. Hand off to Khalid Muhammad on the sweep. Gets outside, pushing toward the 50 and out of bounds at the 49. Yeah, now the Lakers are going to be set up with the fourth and short right here. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. You know, you're up by several possessions. There's it's a running clock, so I'm sure they'll punt it, but it, they could very well hold on to this ball and just try and keep things moving. Muhammad forced out of bounds by Quentin Blakely. That's not going to have an impact because of the Lakers' 36-point lead, the threshold for the mercy rule, and the running clock is 35 points in the MHSAA. Under four minutes left in this ball game on a fourth down and three for West Bloomfield at the at their 49-yard line. One man in the backfield alongside the quarterback, Jamal Shakespeare. Now they'll bring the running back in, so two in the backfield, a fullback and the running back, with two split out to the right and one to the short side. Snap, handoff. No, Shakespeare going to take it himself to the sideline, gets the first down and more, and out of bounds to the 40. I, I mean, really right there, again, the quarterback runs have been doing phenomenal tonight, and Shakespeare just expand, or expanding upon that. Good job on the fake right there to take, and does a good job of getting to the edge and picking up that first down. Keeping his eyes on those linebackers, they push forth through that defensive line, and so he pulls that ball away. First down and 10 now for West Bloomville. That's a sophomore quarterback. It's in the plus territory to the Knights 40 yard line. Josh Tate in the backfield alongside Kieran Hughes. Defensive lineman and a big fullback for WB. In motion, ball handed off. Advancing up to the 30 yard line, still pushing forward. A first down and more for West Bloomville as Khalid Muhammad pushes past the line to gain. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure if we'll see West Bloomfield run another play here now because I believe, I'm, unless, you know, Oak Park starts calling timeouts, I do not believe West Bloomfield will have to run another play. First down, Lakers. Two minutes and a little bit over to go in this ball game. First down and 10 for West Bloomfield, Oak Park's 29-yard line. As the Knights appear to call a timeout, want to make a substitution, talk things over. And so we'll let you know again, we're going to be with you all throughout the playoff season. Big implications with this game as West Bloomfield taking care of business tonight. Likely going to be right back here at West Bloomfield High School next week, Friday. We'll have all your playoff coverage for you live and on demand on civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports. Join us next week. We'll find out who the Lakers play on Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. As Bally Sports will have their annual playoff selection show just following the NFL games on, sat on, uh, on Sunday. Get to see the Lions play on the road against the Baltimore Ravens. And then Lakers will begin their playoff push next week right here at the Swamp on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Beautiful fall-like night in West Bloomfield. Rainy, this, this is exactly what you expect during playoff time in the MHSAA. Big games all across town. Lakers could get some friendly support from people like Celine, number five team in the MHSAA, currently up 21 to 13 at the half at home against Lake Orion. First down, snap. Shakespeare gonna take it himself, looking down the field, rolls outside the pocket to his right, throws at the 35, into the end zone, and it's caught! Oh, 
Oh, what a throw! Into the end zone to Caleb Cottle. Touchdown, WB. Well, I mean, just really a bit of a poetic moment right there for Shakespeare. Really, he, Oak Park calls a bit of an unnecessary timeout. So, West Bloomfield says, oh, you want to stop the clock, call timeouts. Fine, we'll take another shot downfield with our backup quarterback. Shakespeare delivers a strike to Cottle for the touchdown. Hey, Rick Nance to Elijah Durham or to Cam Flowers or to Marquise Morris or Nigel Dunton. We call them the bomb squad. He got the second stringers in. Bomb squad in training. Touchdown puts the Lakers up 48 to 6. But a little bit of extracurriculars happening after the play. Another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Won't impact the Lakers right now, but will being forced on the kickoff, as you heard Stoney announce over the PA. Stoney from 97 won the ticket. We'll continue on with us from West Bloomfield High School all throughout the playoffs. Yeah, I think that penalty was for, you saw a lot of uh, West Bloomfield Lakers flock to the end zone from the bench. So I think it was a bit of a un excessive celebration penalty, which really we don't mind here because it's, you know, really speaks to the team guys gathering to celebrate like that. Lakers will go for two again. Jamal Shakespeare and company with uh, three men in the backfield alongside with him and two split out to either side, right and left. Snap to Shakespeare, hands it off to Massey, up the gut and gets in. Lakers drop a 50 piece on Oak Park. Massey, Lakers 50, Lakers. Oak Park six. It's Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. This is Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. On cable and the radio. On the web too, and on social media. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Find local municipal meetings at our program schedule on civiccentertv.com. Find when your meetings air live or when they're replaying on our Civic Center TV live stream. Find it all at civiccentertv.com and click schedule at the top of the screen. Welcome back to Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. PA announcer for the Lakers, Stoney from 97 won the ticket. Busy weekend begins with Laker football today and then he'll do the Lions post game show on the ticket on Sunday and back to his morning show on Monday. Been a big part of growing this Lakers program, invested in it with his time very early on as Ron Bellamy and Coach Hilbers and company were building this program and been with us since the very beginning. As the Lakers dropping 50 points tonight, an emphatic finale to the regular season, 50 to six in favor of West Bloomfield with a minute 53 to go in this ball game. Once they whistle this play active, the clock will run again as we're in the mercy rule in week nine in the MHSAA. Yeah. I mean, it's funny seeing the Lakers kick the ball off right here from the 25 after those penalties. Scrib kick again, gonna land the 50 yard line recover and he just drops right down on it. The recovery by Malik Munson set the, sets up a first down and plus territory for Oak Park. Yeah, I mean, it's usually that's what your coach should do is just fall on it. In this situation, I'm surprised that he didn't try, you know, really rip off a few more yards. It looked like he may have had a lane to get inside of the 40 at the least. Yeah, he had the space, but, you know, look, slick ball, slick conditions out there. You've dropped a few of these. You want to give your offense an opportunity to take another shot at the end zone with time ticking in this ball game and maybe see what you can make of your final offensive drive, possibly of your season with Oak Park three and five. Coming into this ball game, a win probably would have set them up to at least be on the verge of the playoffs in their respective division. Now it's a learning experience for this young team. Nehemiah Black and a quarterback snap, and he'll hand that ball off. Looks like Burroughs out to the left side. Rolls up the 40-yard line, still on his feet, down to the 30-yard line, and out of bounds it is, in fact, Ivan Burrow, the freshman. Yeah, really an impressive Burrow run again for, for Burrow. Him and Blakely have really flashed tonight, and Reed in the second half especially. There is a lot to be hopeful for this Oak Park team with a lot of talent in that running back room. Yeah, he's, he's a guy that can get scores on the board. A touchdown late last week in that 22 to 42 loss on the road at Seaholm, plus a two-point conversion. 
and a good night tonight for him as well. Despite the scoreboard, Oak Park, a great effort at West Bloomfield High School and showing a lot of promise going forward with 10 seconds and ticking left in this ball game. One final play for the Knights this season. Hand off to Burrow. And he's going to be wrapped up, set down, and sent home. The Lakers will take this one 50 to 6, the final score. Laker post game show coming up next on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. The Lakers 50. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Take a break and tune in to The Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keeft and Diane Chavon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Today I'm going to tell you about sportsmanship because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> My mom says that. Listen to the referees. It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard. So, I got my start in officiating when a friend told me I should try it. At first, I just did basketball, and I got hooked. Before long, I added baseball, softball, football, and volleyball. I really enjoy giving back to the game, working with kids, and working with my local association to recruit and train new officials. I would like to say to anybody that officiating is a great way to help kids and stay connected to the game. We always need new officials. There's help wanted, just listen. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Lakers take a big victory in their final game of the regular season. 50 to 6, the final score. As you see, Marquise Morris, two touchdowns on the ground for the Lakers in this game. All smiles and couldn't be more happy. One of the happiest uh, post game scrums we'll, we'll see all season long for the Lakers. An emphatic finish to the regular season, Matt. And that's what the Lakers needed. Come out here tonight, play a great 48 minutes, and execute. And the Lakers did that from the jump, making big plays. From early on, it all began early on in this ball game. Rick Nance, Elijah Durham, and the bomb squad making connections. From the 50-yard line, Nance got a pocket, tossed that ball down the field, air mailed Elijah Durham, and he delivered the package to the one-yard line, setting up the Lakers for a few plays, a couple of stops from Oak Park, but ultimately getting Nigel Dunton the football. A good push forward, a good block from Brandon Davis Swain. They hit pay dirt. To make it a 7 nothing ball game. Then it comes around again. Rick Nance, first time tonight, hands it off to Marquise Morris. Rolls outside. Gets some open space. That's all you need for a speedy running back. A little bit of physicality at the end. And he gets in the end zone for 6. To make it a 14 nothing game. And guess what? Imitation is the best form of flattery, especially when you're imitating yourself. Does it a second time to make it 21 to zero in favor of the Lakers. Then Rick Nance getting a little bit of that touchdown action himself. Quarterback draw up, the gut gets into the end zone for his third touchdown on the season. Put the Lakers up 28 to zero. That's where it stood at halftime. Then coming into the second half, Oak Park finally getting down the field. Michael Reed and company pushing forward. Ultimately, Ivan Burrow Gets the first touchdown, the only touchdown of the night for Oak Park to make it a 28-6 ball game. And from there, all West Bloomfield all night. As Michael Reed attempts the two-point conversion, and the Lakers defensive line says, nah, you're done scoring. We're tired of that stuff. We gave you one, and we're, not, we're done letting the opposing team score. They make a big stop. Then Rick Nance 
One touchdown's not enough on the ground. Marquise Morris got two. Why can't I? Reaches forward as he's going down before the, the end zone and gets in for his second score on the night. Put the Lakers up 34 to six and, and no two point conversion. But then Michael Reed making big plays. Look at him. Oak Park just playing bully ball on the run, but he drops the football. And ultimately, that ball gets picked up by Josh Tillman, goes back to WB, and now the second string is getting some action. Jamal Shakespeare looking down the field, and a beautiful pass to Caleb Caudill into the end zone. A late touchdown for the Lakers, and a big play set them up for a 50-6 victory. A two-point conversion for WB was good after that. A touchdown run, a two-point conversion gets in for Khalid Muhammad, and West Bloomfield finishes this ball game 50-6, and Matt what a way to wrap things up in the regular season and set the tone for playoff time. Got to play that kind of 48 minutes if you want to win in the postseason. Yeah, really, it was the Lakers' best, most disciplined, most complete game of the entire season, and you can't ask for anything more going into the playoffs. It's a great thing to have the week before the playoffs, and really, this Lakers team has been playing playoff football these past two weeks, going into that Southfield a and game, knowing how important it was that was a playoff game. This is a week before the playoffs, kind of in that playoff mentality already, and now I expect to see a disciplined and focused West Bloomfield team going forward. And again, I got to reference the MHSAA Division I playoff outlook. 32 teams get in, a lot of teams on the bubble in Division I. And for West Bloomfield, they got a lot of teams that are playing each other in that top five, in that top ten, got Northfield number two, playing Belleville number six. You got Legorian in process now at halftime down to, to Celine on the road. That's a four versus five matchup. Then you got number three Davison on the uh, playing against Lapeer in their game. That's the number two team versus, sorry, number three team versus the number 22 team playing tonight. So there's going to be a lot of movement at the top. West Bloomfield with this win, with those kinds of points being put on the board, positioning themselves very well for maybe two home games in the playoffs should they be able to escape round one, unlike last year in 2023. Plenty more coming up. We'll, we'll take a short break and then wrap things up from West Bloomfield High School, the Laker Post Game Show on Civic Center TV and 89.3 XFM. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Take a break and tune in to the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Join Tyler Keith and Diane Chavon as they go through headlines, events, and update you on the day-to-day -day in Oakland County. Catch us live weekdays, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Watch us on demand at civiccentertv.com. Or watch us on TV at Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T at Channel 99. Today I'm going to tell you about sportsmanship because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> My mom says that. Listen to the referees. It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard. A 7-2 and two regular season for the West Bloomfield Lakers, finishing the season tonight with an emphatic 50-6 to six victory over Oak Park at the Swamp, an extra home game, and the Lakers made the most of it with MHSAA playoff time right around the corner. And just a couple of days from now, we'll know where West Bloomfield will be beginning their playoff run, who they'll be going up against in the MHSAA Division I playoffs. And we'll have all of our playoff coverage for you right here on Civic Center TV and on 89.3 Lakes FM. Valley Sports will have the selection show on Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We'll find out the Lakers opponent. More than likely going to be a home game for the Lakers with some shakeups in the top five and in the top ten after this Friday night across the MHSAA. And 
We'll figure that all out. We'll have our live coverage all postseason long on Civic Center TV. In the meantime, keep up to date with us on civiccentertv.com slash Lakers sports. Matt, plenty of football hopefully ahead for these Lakers after this final regular season game. Your final thought, thoughts on the Lakers tonight and these last few weeks. Yeah, I mean, really, ever since that loss to Lake Orion, this team has really been disciplined and has had an attention to detail that has been phenomenal to watch. You can tell that they really were humbled by that loss, and they're really looking forward to this playoff push. Yeah, that was right in their hands. It was very close. They just let go. They just weren't there yet, weren't tough enough, weren't disciplined enough, didn't play a smart enough game and then a complete game, came back from that and won against Rochester Adams, nearly came back and played a, a hard-fought game on the road in Clarkston, lost that game, and then finished with three consecutive victories all emphatic in their own right. 38 to 19 at Oxford, 31 to 20 at Southfield A&T. And tonight, your final score from West Bloomfield High School, West Bloomfield 50 and Oak Park 6. For our entire team, our camera operators, Dom Catoni and Rich Miller on site, engineer Jared Clark from on site, as well as Dave Scott, our director and executive producer, Calvin Brown, our assistant director at Master Control and technical director, and everybody on our team and our partners at the West Bloomfield High School Athletic Department, alongside Matt Catoni, I'm Tyler Keith. Good night from West Bloomfield Laker, for West Bloomfield High School, Laker football coming off all, playoff, all playoffs long on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM.